Okay, hello everybody. Today's date is 12-17-2020. My name is Leslie Williams. I live in San Diego, California in the community of La Jolla. I'm a target victim and activist concerned the continued criminal expeditions of what is known as gang stalking. Let's see if anything happens that prevents this video from being published. That's, done, that's been done to me concerning my Periscope videos dedicated to five separate Periscope accounts. Um, massive amounts of things have been done to my videos and my Periscope account. Well, my, my Periscope videos through my Periscope account connected to sabotaging of my settings and the videos um, as a direct result of those things being intentionally brought about through uh, in real time live, in real time live covert gang stalking techniques, meaning that they're sabotaging your account, sabotage, uh, sabotaging your ability to make a video, sabotaging your ability to make sure that it gets saved into your uh, uh, gallery. Some uh, additional methods that they can use to do this is by calling your phone while you're making the video. And in the past, concerning my um, Boost mobile phone that I no longer use, uh, when I was making Periscope videos to that Periscope account using that phone, they would call my phone in order to interrupt it. That's even been exposed in some of the, uh, in, in at least one of the Tekken Prime Fighters video series videos that I've, that I brought up over the past year or so. I, I forget which episode number. So you can go to YouTube search box and type in a YouTube search box, uh, Dr. Catherine Horton, Techno Crime Fighters, or, uh, and or, uh, Romola D Reports, Techno Crime Fighters. Then go into their YouTube channels and look for the playlists that are titled Techno Crime Fighters. Okay, my fellow American citizens, my name is Leslie Williams again. My name is Leslie Williams, so I'm making, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm making this video just to share some information with you concerning, uh, some of the things that are connected to gang stalking crimes. And um, now, uh, over the years, as a direct result of me uh, uh, being forced to endure massive amounts of crimes to this crime, and I'd say at least 98.99% of the things that I've endured are identical, purposely identical, perpetrated in a cyclic, perpetual cycle. Now, um, I'm going to tell you uh, the, the extreme possibility of why this is done. It's done for visual and auditorial brain treatment, which is connected to remote neural monitoring technology connected to gang stalking. Now, hold on one second. Let me feed my bird here. So, what I'm going to do in this video, and so let's see if this video doesn't publish to my gallery. And then after I make it, I'm also going to uh, 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 send it to my YouTube account so it can be uploaded to YouTube. Okay, let's see if, if this video is not saved in my files uh, my files folder, uh, which so far every Periscope video that I've made through my Samsung phones, I have been able to do so. All right, hold on a second. So I'm going to talk to you just for a little bit about... How how it's extremely pos uh, likely and possible, well, likely possible, concerning why any specific gang stalking victim can be enduring. The great majority of gang stalking victims, hundreds of thousands, of, there are hundreds of thousands of them all over America. Tens of thousands are reporting this crime online and all social media platforms. Okay, at least the ones that I've ever interfaced with. And I think you have a general idea of what are the uh, what are the major social online platforms. So this crime, when you're dealing with a crime that intentionally, purposely victimizes you, traumatizes you, and that destroys every aspect of your life, every aspect of your personal autonomy, just about like ninety percent of that, and one hundred percent. Um, controls your every aspect of your life. Uh, we live. Uh, most citizens, citizens of, of at least industrial uh, industrialized countries, live within a system that is put up and structured so that the citizenry is forced to interact with it, survive it, and um, stay entrapped within it. Governments. Okay federal, state, county, local, uh, and city, and so on. 
So, as a direct result of a human being forced to live within a constructed system, then that victim has to engage in behaviors that then uh, leads the victim into functioning within that structure system. Now, I know you know what I'm talking about. In order to buy a house, you gotta, most people got to take out a bank loan. Okay, and yes, the, the banks are part of our system. They're just a tentacle to it. Uh, if you are getting your correspondence concerning your business transactions through the mail, well, then that's another aspect that this crime controls 1,000%. But one of the biggest methods of gang stalking is isolating their victims. And one of the ways that one of the techniques that's employed to isolate the isolate the victim within the crime is by and through, but not limited to, obviously, con uh, uh, controlling and even censoring, okay, your communications, your phone, computer, tablet, your ability to use Wi-Fi, uh, your ability to do online work that's not manipulated or destroyed, you getting things uh, in the mail, your ability to send things and, and, and know that they have arrived at the places that you've sent it. Uh, if the government has any influence over banks where they can influence a bank not to give a gang stalker victim a, a loan that might help them survive or might uh, might help them uh, pay off something that the victim needs to have paid off in order to survive so the banks and and, and the banks are a tentacle connection to the government uh, so anyway so we all know what type of system we're living in, in within our jurisdictions of our city, town, city, county, and states. And then you got the federal, uh, the federal aspect of our government. So, in order to destroy every aspect of a victim's life, and then to construct, uh, uh, in order to perpetrate that, and then protect all the crimes that were involved in doing it, concerning tearing down your life, which I'll expand on a little bit more here in a minute, and then I'm going to segue into what I wanted to talk about. you got to look at what makes up a person's life. Social relationships, communication, okay, shelter, food, water, resources, to, uh, resources which include, obviously, money to, to keep yourself sustained, food, water, shelter, clothes, and so on. Then you got to look at all the variables that assist the victim to function within the system uh, of our uh, of, of government, mail, and many other things. Again, remember, if you're a gang stalking victim, there's an extreme likelihood you're redlining through the bank, so you can't take out a loan if you need to. Oh, absolutely. So, when you're living within a control control construct our system and how it's massively tentacled out within our community connected to industry and other uh, entities like churches, charities, and so on. And yes, they are from behind the scenes. The average person just doesn't have a clue because they wouldn't even think about something like that because of the simple fact that no person would sit back and say, well, why would I have to worry about the government controlling a church concerning like uh, food assistance and clothing assistance, money, whatever. Why would I even have to wonder if the government is, is capable of and or doing that since I ha would have no, nothing to motivate me to have that thought? Okay? Make no fucking mistake about it. This crime controls everything. Food banks, homeless shelters, uh, the assistance that the victim would get through churches and food banks and homeless shelters, the assistance of, a victim would get through social services, social security... Uh, uh, bank loans, the whole fucking nine yards. So I think you're understanding, in part at least, you're getting like maybe a preliminary view of how human beings are forced to function within our structured systems. Their ability to privately clue with landlords and property owners uh, concerning uh, renting an apartment, staying in a motel, uh, uh, a buy, a renting or buying a condo, they can easily easily collude with property owners, landlords, uh, uh, and if you want to take out a mortgage to buy a home or to buy a condo or uh, one of those leased apartments that are up for sale, they'll control that too. So if they can probably collude with landlords and property owners in order to make a victim homeless, then they're destroying that aspect 
of you having mastery over your life concerning your shelter. If they can then keep the homelessness going by watching you in real time in order to see if you're applying for tenancy to be a tenant at another apartment, well, they can see you're looking that up on the internet concerning like apartments in the area where you live or apartments in, in general concerning the current county you're in, city you're in, or any surrounding city counties or, or uh, cities or counties. They're watching every fucking thing you do online. So if they see you harvested addresses of apartment complexes and then in, into your email account and then get up and go take the buses you need to take to get there or get a ride there, they are already seeing what you're doing and why you're doing it. They will head you off at the pass by privately colluding with that property owner and or landlord into intimidating, intimidating him or her not to rent you. One example is they can claim you're a criminal. They can claim you're under investigation for federal or state, county, or local crimes. They can claim you're a social deviant. Now, most landlords or property owners are going to say to themselves, a person with a badge and a fake bogus criminal investigation file that they're presenting to me, even though the landlord, don't, landlord doesn't know that it's fake, he's going to hear everything, and if he's presenting it with anything like something on an official document that's been nothing but a contracted lie, like uh, them tr presenting like a case file of the victim. So you combine that with a lie, a verbal lie, a verbal constructed lie, a badge, and then the documentation, that landlord is going to say to themselves, I better follow the direction this law enforcement officer is presenting to me because of two reasons. You don't want to have trouble with the law, and you don't want possibly a complicated tenant that can bring problems to that apartment complex. So that's how they keep the homelessness continued by making sure you can't run a fucking apartment. Including mobile homes, running a mobile home, including staying at a motel long term. And if you fucking go to a motel, even if you're allowed to rent a motel room for more than a week or so, they'll put you through extreme hell at that motel by renting motel rooms right around you and subjecting you to a whole host of different techniques like noise campaigns, possibly even direct energy weapons attacks. Aaron Alexis, the Navy Yard shooter, had to flee from his home. He went to motels and then was uh, tracked to the motels and hit with direct energy weapons. Continually. All right, hold on a second. Continually. Hi. Okay. All right, let me check something here. So my fellow American citizens, I wanted to bring these uh, statements to you in order to give you a preliminary, uh, to, in order to give you a, a introduction, a small preface, pre preface, in order to help you see it is extremely easy and it is absolutely massively happening concerning the, the, these satanic gang raping, raping, murdering, human trafficking, demonic depraved, demented animals. They do have the resources to make sure that that they can, uh, they do have the resources and the trade craft to totally destroy literally every aspect of your life. They can keep you away from assistance, financial and legal. They can keep you away from medical assistance. If you're being hit with direct energy weapons, they know that's affecting your body, including inducing illnesses, including inducing uh, terminal illnesses, but they can allow you to prove that through a hospital, doctor, medical clinic, or medical center. If they can see that you're looking up hospitals in your area, medical centers in your area, area medical clinics, and then it, through, the, uh, uh, through the continued interval trying to track and review, they can see you're headed to that direction of the address of the places that you looked up on the internet, well then they'll get on the fucking phone and or go there and, and repeat the same shit that they would re that I just described to you concerning the property owners. They're told that if she re he or she requests any specific type of test, make sure that you even get that you either give that person a test result from somebody else who has no health maladies, or they'll compromise it, including going as far as calibrating. Okay. Uh, the uh, fMRI machines that uh, are uh, and CAT scans that you can have done concerning those types of tests in order to see if you got an implant in your brain. Google all my statements to gang stalking. 
There's even books written about this shit, and this shit has been covered on national radio shows. So, so trust me when I say I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Because you gotta remember, this is a program. It's a program designed to control you until they can exploit you to make money off you up until your death and even make money off the death. Life ins- third party life insurance pol- policies. I've seen massive information on the internet stating that they're also involved in organ harvesting. Okay, then there's the non-consensual human experimentation crimes connected to this crime, and every single second of that is nothing but sadistic non-stop torture. The United Nations in February and March of 2020 declared gang-stalking victims as being extreme torture victims in the UN Cyber Torture Report. And electromagnetic weapons and human experimentation is, is, is openly, descriptively stated within the text of that report, including the summary of it. Uh, I'm like 90% sure it's in the summary as well. So do you think of uh, a worldwide government body that is encompassed of multiple governments around the world is going to sit back and then say that a, a specific type of group is being sadistically, non, uh, sadistically, extremely, massively tortured as a result of their extreme torture victims... Do you honestly think that they're going to conclude that and then put it in a report if fucking nothing was going on? So they know what they're fucking doing to you concerning every single fucking thing they're doing to you. So they got to control your life to make sure you don't get out of any and all current effects that you've been put in, current circumstances that you've been put in, and they got to make sure that you get no type of uncorrupted legal assistance because... If you do, you would then be able to prove your evidences in court to prove any or all aspects of this crime you're enduring. Because once it becomes a matter of court record that you're enduring extreme massive victimization, then you can start suing people. You can start holding people in places accountable that participated into, into uh, that participated in aspects of this crime towards you. Okay. Once it becomes a matter of, of, of government record that you've endured a heinous, extreme crime, then every variable connected to that crime can be prosecuted and be sued. Now, since it's extremely reported that these six satanic bitches that are hosting this, these mass murdering, wild, human trafficking, raping animals who are hosting this crime, all alphabet agencies, fusion centers, state, county, and local cops, and many others, all working together as an up and operating organi- national organized crime syndicate within the system and how it's tentacled out in order to be um, perpetrated by and through places within our communities because of the massive control they got over places within our community. Why are NSA letters all over the internet to be one of the legal apparent instruments that is um, being used in order to conceal things? Okay, from uh, if you can approach a lawyer or a law firm that a victim is uh, contemplating to go to because they see the victim is looking their shit up on the internet, including directions to get to that law firm, if you can then say, okay, the victim, we know the victim's got evidence, and we can see they're looking up law- lawyers and law firms on the internet, so again, through the in real time tracking every day, they can see the victim's heading in that direction. By taking the bus routes needed for it and everything, because they seen literally the victim map quest how to get to this law, law law firm or lawyer's office. If you were to type in UCSD's physical address to uh, then a law firm's address at MapQuest, then MapQuest is going to present you a bunch of different ways of how you can get to it on your bicycle, walking, car. And even the roads and then how many miles it takes to get to, to get there. Okay? So they can see that you are meticulously researching this so you'll know what steps you got to take to go there. Then through the in real time current tracking of you, they can see you're going there. Now, has it ever been reported that NSA letters are being used to approach and conference with prospective lawyers and law firms? that the victim may be trying to attempt to contact in order to get some type of legal advocacy or at least legal advice. 
an NSA letter prohibits that lawyer and or law firm from telling the victim that they've been approached. Now, that means that since one of the, uh, one of the largely confirmed techniques of this crime is to intimidate people. Most lawyers know the government can spend you to death. They also know that uh, experienced lawyers do. And most experienced lawyers also know that the government can intentionally, through creative means, all criminal, can intentionally, purposely tie you up in endless litigation. They also know the victim doesn't have money to pay lawyers. Okay? Make no fucking mistake about it. Right? So... What kind of lies could possibly be said or what type of statements could be said from a federal asshole or a state cop or a local cop even? I don't, I don't, there, there is always that likelihood if you have, say, a police lieutenant or a police sergeant who has a quasi-position, meaning that he works for two entities like the CIA and or the NSA and or the um, FBI he could be on their payroll, loosely connected, but yet mo but yet used by these types of alphabet agencies, meaning that he's got a double employment description. Now, as a result of him having a double employment description, he can approach a lawyer with an NSA letter. Because if memory serves me correctly, NSA letters are dedicated to the FBI, but I have no doubt in my mind at all that the other entity, other alphabet agencies can, can, can uh, 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 wield it uh, before uh, to, uh, and present it to her, whoever they feel they need to conference with, and most of the people that the gang stalking victim is contemplating to go to and are going to are places for assistance concerning them being victimized through this crime. So what? What? I'll just expand on this for one more second here. <laughs> if a if a, let's just say as an example, let's say if it's an FBI agent. Hold on. <clears throat> so let's say you got an FBI agent, and he's got that legal authority to have a NSA letter. The powers that go with that NSA letter, and possibly even other legal appearing uh, uh, types of things, could be uh, protecting him, his agency, okay, and or that can be used to justify why the victim might go to them. Just hear me out. I've also seen a lot of shit concerning uh, FISA courts, illegal, illegally criminally obtained FISA warrants, that then allows them to have a normal appearance, legal appearing excuse to surveil the victim. I'm seeing a lot of shit concerning the NDAA and the Patriot Act being used too. So let me just wrap this statement up by saying, okay, but the following statement is not the only way, a possible way that, uh, could be used in conjunction with these NSA, NSA letters or any other type of legal appearance documentation that would serve uh, that could be presented that would assist in serving their purpose concerning anything they might be trying to do to a victim, which can include behaviors that will then affect the and prevent the victim from getting assistance. So just let me explain this for a couple more seconds, and I'll segue into the subject matter. So if an NSA, if uh, let's, as an example, let's say if an FBI agent walks up to a law firm that they believe the victim is going to eventually run to, including in the near future. So what type of statement would he make to that lawyer and or law firm? He could say, here's this NSA letter. Here's my badge. Here's a, here's a criminal investigation file. Google, go to Google and type in fake bogus criminal investigation files to gang stalking. And you should also watch the YouTube video and listen to a stranger. Hold on a second. So they can walk up to that lawyer. Mm. Pre present to that lawyer an NSA letter, which then creates the force and effect of it, meaning that the person they're approaching, and if they're being told that uh, to do and or not to do specific things, Okay. Uh, then could the NSA letter be at least used? So, if if you walk up to a lawyer and say, "I'm an FBI agent. Look at this criminal investigation file. Look at this NSA letter," you possibly might have this individual coming to you in the near future, 
and we want you to know that this person is under federal investigation for any type of specific crime. And so an additional statement they can make to them is that is it, you're being advised not to interact with this person. You're being advised not to advocate for this person legally because uh, the surveillance and everything we're doing because of what we're claiming the victim is involved in is a matter of national security. Now, uh, I've seen massive information on the internet that openly states that if anybody's presented with an NSA letter about any place or anything, uh, any place or anybody, that person who is approached with it does not, is, is not able, is not allowed to tell that person that they've been approached with it. Now, so say you got a lawyer and a law firm that was approached with it, and then through the, through the mechanics that was used, in order to persuade that lawyer or law firm not to advocate for the victim, well, they're not allowed to tell the victim that they were approached and intimidated out of assisting the victim. So what they will then do is look for another reason to state to the victim why they're not interested in advocating for them legally. I'm sorry I'm not interested in your type of case. I'm sorry there's not much I can do, but that doesn't mean that you can't get help from another lawyer, and so on and so forth. So this is an additional way concerning it being reported to be an additional way of how these six satanic murdering, human trafficking, raping whores are able to keep victims away from legal rep uncorrupt legal representation. And trust me when I fucking say, if you got a, any lawyer or law firm that's being connected by and through any alphabet intelligence agency, you better believe that that lawyer or he has at least a good general idea of what the government can do to him and his job. He, how does he make his livelihood through the courts? If you honestly don't fucking think these sick bitch intelligence agencies that are massively implicated to be involved in this crime, including hosting it, cannot wreck the livelihood of a lawyer and or law firm, fucking think again. And plus lawyers and law firms also know that it's extremely expensive to sue the government. And they also know that the government can engage in creative techniques to tie that case up for years on end. Be including making sure that no evidentiary hearing occurs as this, uh, as they're uh, uh, tying the uh, case, uh, the complaint up before it's even presented to, at the uh, evidentiary hearing level. Okay? So, what you got on, uh, judges are also massively implicated in this crime, as well as prosecutors, DA, DA, DA office members, uh, public defenders, cops, the whole fucking nine yards. So, if you got a program, which gang stalk, that's what gang stalking is. If you got a program that's designed to employ massive amounts of techniques that cause extreme detrimental, long-lasting effects in a human being's life, hold on a second. Which absolutely includes tearing down the victim's ability to have shelter. An apartment, home, trailer at a trailer park, long sustained time of the target staying in a motel room. Then they know that that target will be made homeless intentionally because they're intentionally affecting it. So then what can happen to you once you be fucking become homeless? They can track you to any place you're staying at, a bus stop, sleeping on a sidewalk, going to a wooded area, sleeping in an empty parking lot or an abandoned home. All they got to fucking do is track you, stage probable cause to make it appear they have a normal appearing reason to know where you're at, and then fucking arrest you and or ticket you, or at least force you off the property, okay? So that's just, and to create falsified police reports about you once they're interacting with you, including tailoring their police report with statements like, uh, we believe this subject uh, has some type of mental illness. That's a huge method of gang stalking Google My Statements. Okay? Now, and then you gotta, all you gotta do is look at your life. If you're an American citizen and you're over the age of 18, 21, well, you're well into your way of establishing the rest of your life. And so that you can live your life within the construct of the system of our government and how our communities are structured and operate. 
because they can fucking control everything. They can set you up at a stage for a staged event in a grocery store to ban you from that grocery store and or the plaza it's in in order to purposely cause you to have to go to a long, uh, grocery store that's two hours away or an hour away. So by the time you end up having to go there, do your shopping and come back, that's eating up four hours of your schedule during the day. Four hours you could have spent doing legal preparations in order to advocate for yourself in the courts as attorney pro se. Meaning that you're your own lawyer. This crime can do anything. It can force you out of a community by banning you from every place that you would have to go to in order to get your needs met. Now, once those places and resources are taken away from you, they know you're going to move out of the area because they know you got in real time continued needs. Grocery shopping, okay, places to go get water. You know, when you're made homeless, you no longer have a water faucet. Do you understand? Of course you do. So look at what is made up of your life. Okay. How do you function within the construct of our system and within the construct of our, how our communities operate? You uh, communicate through the mail. You depend on your phone, too, and that's a personal thing, but yet they're hacking and jamming phones. Hold on. And controlling the features and functions of it. And much more. Same thing uh, concerning your computers, tablets, laptops, and including controlling the fucking computer when you go to a library. Okay. So, if they can make you homeless, and they've already made you jobless, if you're a victim who is able to work, because they're targeting a lot of people on disability, and that's done for eventual illegal probate control schemes for racketeering purposes, insurance fraud purposes, and much more, what this crime has to do is isolate you within the program of the crime so that they walk you to what's needed to be done, additionally done towards you in order to then lead you to where you then end up getting massively exploited. And if you're a non-consensual human experimentation victim as a result of you being a gang stalker victim, they're already making money off you. They don't have to be in your fucking physical presence in order to make money off you by experimenting, experimenting on you remotely through remote neural monitoring, voice to skull, any type of implants that are in you that they're monitoring. Because they're, when, when they extract that data concerning the victimization of the neurological and biological systems, they're able to monitor the effects of what's being done to the burning body. Uh, excuse me, and then they take excuse me, please, the, and then they take that research data and sell it to research groups. That's being massively reported. Okay, so so let's say they've already taken the shelter away. They're working on the rest of your finances right now. Why can I not go to any of my banks? Are they all closed right now in my in San Diego because of the virus thing? So I don't even know if my December Social Security check has been ripped off yet uh, out of my account. And the last um, uh, portion of the stimulus check that should still be in my bank account. Because my current bank account uh, uh, where I uh, conduct my banking at, all their San Di immediate San Diego locations are closed probably because of the new uh, recent restrictions that have been propped up through because of COVID-19. Okay. But anyway, so, so so let's say they've already destroyed your ability to have shelter. Then what they'll do is employ techniques to cause you to go through your savings. That includes but not limited to bank account infiltration and liquidation. That includes sabotaging your clothes, your property that you used to survive. The only way that you're then going to continue to survive is to rebuy that property. Money that's used to make um, uh, buy phones. You buy the phone. You pay for the payment contra uh, the payment plan. The you pay for the contract uh, plan for it, and then they jam or make the phone inoperable. So then you got to buy another one. 
They steal your camping gear and or damage it and or kick you off a property and then ban you from it so you can't go back to get it. Property you hit on a, at a wooded area. So there's, there's massive amounts of wood. And if you're a victim that's still got a car, they can sabotage the fuck out of the car. And they, and they do mechanically and, le and electrically to get you to go through your money in order to get the car back uh, in an operable way. And then after you went through a significant amount of money, after they have repeated those events, they'll then stage a vehicle accident. So you're going to have a car to sleep in once they make you homeless. <laughs> so they, they're destroying your finances, what's left of them. They are blacklisting you from employment so you can't work if you can work if you're not disabled. They've taken away your shelter. They're destroying your social relationships. Google that to gang stalking. Okay. And they can also control any relationships that you may still have left. And they can even use family members and friends against you. Google social, uh, social, go to Google and type in social and family and intimate infiltration and gang stalking. So, because they got to isolate you from support. Okay, because if they create a negative effect in your life that's threatening your survival... They can't have you running into to anybody that will assist you in surviving. Or they might they might use somebody in your life, including a family member, to collude with them so then they can coerce the victim into depending on them. So when the victim goes to depend on them, they can stage they can literally then stage an event between you and them and call the cops and then the cops come out and play their role. That's fucking literally some of the links that's being reported to be done in gang stalking crimes. Where they will literally privately collude with your family members even. And get them to use them against you. One of the main goals of gang stalking is to intentionally put you in a survival situation and then make it not survivable. So they can get a hold of you eventually to exploit you. If you had an apartment or a home, and you're paying rent for that apartment or home, then you have a place to legally go to, and once you go to it and shut that fucking door, no one has a right to go through that door without permission. Otherwise, that person would be committing a crime, including a felony. If you've been made homeless, you no longer have that personal boundary space protection. And they fucking know it. And they also know they can take advantage of the fact you're homeless because they know all creatures on this planet have to fucking sleep. So they know wherever you fucking lay down at to sleep at, except for maybe a sidewalk, but they could probably also get you for that as well, okay? They know then that they can control you as a direct result of using police against you, including property owners. If they know where you're at and they got the ability to identify the address of the property you're on, they can then take that address and go look up the tax ID of that address to see who owns the property. Then privately collude with that property owner, tell them a bunch of sophisticated lies like they do concerning landlords, banks, okay, and um, lawyers. And they can say, we need you to assist us in getting this victim out of this community. They're using your property, so can you please approach them and tell them they got to leave or, or that you're going to call the cops. And they can stage probable cause. So in order to make it appear that someone called the cops on you as a result of seeing you, hearing you, or seeing your property on the property. They're then used to call the cops. So then the cops have a normal appearing reason to know where you're at. So they can set you up for tickets, arrest, and, or, and also falsified documentation about you. The victim must be crazy because if they think they're being stalked by people they don't know. The victim's homeless and won't get out of it even though we offer them services. They already know you won't take services offered to you through them because they already know you know they're connected to this crime and they're just trying to take you to a homeless shelter so you can be set up for a staged event because they know when you're alone in a wooded area, you don't, you're not forced to be in an environment where other people can be used around you concerning you and directly towards you for a staged event. So they already know you know this. But they'll never admit that they know you're being gang stalked. And they'll never admit that they know you know you'd be gang stalked to a homeless shelter. But when they're offering you 
services like a homeless shelter, they're videotaping that offer. offer. Six, and if you don't go, and then six months down the road, you're found dead at a wooded area or raped or robbed, okay, Then they and then they know you're going to call the police over it, like if they raped or robbed you, well, then the police will say, you know, Miss Williams, you chose to go to this wooded area. Homeless people are prone to go to wooded areas. We offered you homeless services. You didn't go, so you put yourself in this bad situation. Therefore, you cannot make healthy choices in taking care of yourself, so we're going to petition you into a psychiatric ward. Then the psychiatric ward will be instructed to petition the court to take a legal probate control of you so they can use you as a straw person for federal and state funds and, and then employ the gang stalking program against you in the group home you're put in, blame you for staged events, claim you are provoking the events and that you're a threat to yourself or others, repetition you back into the psychiatric ward so they can massively exploit your insurance. And this is where hospitals, medical centers, medical clinics and doctors and administrative staff and even nurses can play their role in the creation of falsified documentation which they need for the insurance fraud and to make it appear that they have a continued legal apparent reason to keep the probate control. And you can also be drugged with the date rape drug in these group homes and then once the drug takes effects, they can bring in men to endlessly rape you, videotape the rape, and sell it to pornography groups. Welcome to, welcome to your sick bitch demonic government. Your government ain't nothing but a mass murdering, raping, gang raping, human trafficking, satanic whore. It's fucking all they are, and it's literally all they'll ever be. When you research rape and gang rape to gang stalking, look at what the fuck comes up and how much comes up. When you research the police and courts and gang stalking, look at what the fuck comes up and how much. Do you think it's an accident there's hundreds of thousands of victims all over America and not one case, not one case is being investigated, not one. The only time that they will prosecute a person that has played a role in a staged event like an assault or robbery or rape against a gang stalker victim is because a middleman, a middleman or woman, used that person to commit the act and then used the victim as the complainant so they can then target that person that was used to set that person up for racketeering schemes, including concerning privately owned detention centers, prisons, uh, 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 probation cost schemes and a bunch of other shit. That's the fucking loot Do you have any idea how much money is made off the health insurance fraud connected to gang stalking? Mental and medical? It's fucking in the hundreds of millions of dollars every year. That's the fucking loot if you're at a wooded area, they can prop up utility company personnel to report to you because they have a normal apparent reason to be in the area because they're working on a fucking telephone pole. And then they, they're used to claim they heard you saw your saw your property. They can use a public worker through the through the city or county. They can use a neighbor that might be staying in the area right around where the victim went to. These fucking sick bitch, mass murdering, human trafficking, torturing whores will fucking use anybody of any age at any time, anywhere against the victim. What do you think the word gang of gang stalking is? And the stalking is illegal tracking. They're illegally tracking you to gang up on you. When they use a judge, a prosecutor uh, against you and a cop against you, that's multiple people. The gang of gang stalking. And the influence and the problems that they cause through their employment description against the victim is assisting in bringing about the motive of why the victim's targeted to begin with. But you see, the victim is treated in a way to where they're unable, able to legally advocate for themselves because they're intentionally labeling the gang stalker victim as being mentally ill and then mentally incompetent. So then all they got to do then is play out their theater in a courtroom in order to achieve the objective. And one of those objectives can absolutely be and is illegal probate control schemes for racketeering purposes, insurance fraud pur purposes, and staged recorded videotaped raped, rapes. Do you have any idea how much money is made off of videotaped rape? 
on the dark web. I don't know, but it's being massively reported that that it can go in because that video, one video, can be thousands of people can pay to see it over time, and that's just one rate. Welcome to your filthy, criminally insane, demonic, bitch ass government. And they can sexually enslave a woman all, all the way throughout the entire time of her fucking life and then set her up to be murdered so they can cash in on a third party life insurance policy and even arg uh, harvest her organs and so on. So, what I just, everything I just stated to you is extremely graphic. I'm sure you, and most normal, healthy, moral people could possibly even uh, feel like throwing up right now. Okay. My name is Leslie Williams. I have been, I, I have experienced massive long-term homelessness that was intentionally affected for me to purposely endure created through intentionally perpetrated techniques directly connected to this crime since 2002 at least. And in 2002 is when the community-based harassment and, and gang stalking started. So you ask yourself, you look at your life. Look at your life. Look at what makes up your life. Family, friends, employment. Pla a safe place to live and stay. This gives you a sense of self-determination of your life, who's allowed in it and who ain't. This gives you a sense of, of having some type of quality of life. This gives you a sense of having mastery over your life and control over your own life. It gives you a sense of freedom. Every single last bit of that is extremely and intentionally raped from the victim. Endlessly. So, if you're sitting in your living room, your office, your kitchen, or wherever the hell else you might be sitting at, on any given day when you're watching this video, take a look at what makes up your life. Your shelter, your relationships, your ability to uh, thrive and survive within your dedicated juris jurisdictional community, your freedom to move about, okay? Your freedom to make choices and then act on those choices so then those choices assist you in surviving and moving forward in your life. Every single fucking last bit of that is intentionally, intentionally, with complete malice of forethought, intentionally raped from the victim throughout their entire fucking uh, t um time span that they're being targeted, which can be for, and this is no joke, up to 30, 40, 50, and even 60 years long. I've seen victims on the internet who say they're 70 and that they've been victims of this crime since childhood. The only fucking entity that's got the ability to target a human being, okay, uh, for even a year is the government. Especially concerning this program, because this program perpetrates a um, <coughs> specific, unique uh, techniques and methods in order to affect the effects and create the circumstances that are then eventually used for the, uh, as, as steps that lead to the exploitation. And the eventual exploitation, a lot of it is brought about through the very system itself. But when they do that, they make it look, try to they try to make it appear that it's all being done through legal means, and then they'll never admit that this, this is, that this was connected to organized crime schemes, and they will never admit any subsequent resulting victimizations that happen as a result of any court decision, illegal probate control schemes included. Make no fucking mistake about it. You should research what a financial straw person means. So you. When you go to the bathroom and you look in the mirror and you see your physical representation and then you look at all the variables of what makes up your life, imagine all of that being taken from you, then you're made homeless while you're enduring the nonstop continual crime every fucking day because this is a crime that intentionally, purposely forces you to mentally recognize that you're a continued victim of it.
through the intentionally applied techniques and methods and tactics that the victim is forced to endure every single day, including massive amounts of repeated techniques every day. So imagine you being all alone in a tent while you're forced to be uh, made afraid of what's going to happen what can happen to me today because they know you know that they've staged events against you that have then led to massive amounts of effects and circumstances the events that they create uh, the uh, the behaviors they engaged in to make me homeless from the apartments that they they have made me homeless from at least four in Michigan and one in Tennessee they intentionally let you know that that homelessness that was created from those places was done intentionally through gang stalking because they creatively let you know it and then even mock you about it. Then after they make you homeless, they will then track you to wooded areas and stage events against you. And then as the stage events are either unfolding or right directly after the event, they will intentionally mentally let you know that this is a stage event connected to gang stalking. And that event can cause you to be arrested, ticketed, property loss. And then when you get released from jail, you gotta then spend money to replace that property. So they're forcing the brain into non-stop, endless victimization. Endless victimization. They're mind-raping the victim every day and raping every variable and attribute, okay, and everything that makes up your ability to, to control your own life. And every single thing that they fucking do, they will creatively let you know that it's being intentionally done through gang stalking. Because they need that mental rape. Okay? They need to excite the neural response, the negative emotional response, and the negative thinking pattern response to each technique they employ. And now I'm segueing into the subject matter of this video. Good afternoon. My name is Leslie Williams. I live in San Diego, California. I'm a target victim and activist concerned the continued criminal expeditions of what is known as gang stalking. Now, if you, uh, I'm going to give you about a minute to go get a pen and piece of paper so you can write down these follow-up descriptions because they're paramount. So they're paramount. It's paramount for you to do that. So after you write them down on any uh, subsequent time or day, you can take a look at that paper concerning what's written down and extensively, meticulously, with a patient posture, Google all those descriptions to gang stalking, and you you can also get many results from YouTube pertaining to specific descriptions. Okay? So I'm going to give you right now a minute to get up and go get a pen and piece of paper. And I've already explained in prior videos why it's, why it's a good idea to do that, so I'm not going to regurgitate that statement either. <coughs> so while you're doing that, I'm going to uh, light a cigarette and take a couple of puffs off it. Alright, here we go. That should have gave you enough time to maybe go get something to drink and a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil, whatever. Now, I want you to listen to my statements. Okay? You can Google the, the great, great majority of my descriptions to gang stalking. Okay? And some of them will bring you search results through YouTube as well. So, hear me out. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down a small foundation. Then my follow-up statements is going to complement what's already been presented, and then the continued explanations that lead to the conclusion will back it all up. I know, hold on one second. Now, some of the things that I'm going to state to you right fucking now is going to blow your mind. You might even initially say to yourself, no way at all whatsoever that something like this could be occurring. Make no fucking mistake about it. It's occurring. Now, my fellow American citizens, give me a second here because I'm going to bring up my other phone because I'm going to eventually show you some snap screenshots of something I'm getting ready to talk to you about here in a couple minutes. Now, <coughs> all right, so remember, write down my descriptions. So, here's some of them right here. Remote neural monitoring. Voice to skull technology. 
voice the skull with voice morphine. Okay. Uh, the microwave hearing effect. Ultrasonic sound bone conduction. Okay. Hollow sonics. The audio spotlight. Uh, silent sound spread spectrum. What else do we got? The neural phone. Okay. Now, if I uh, remember any of uh, the names of any other types of psychotronics connected to gang stalking, I'll, event, I'll, I'll, I'll include those as well as I continue to speak. All right, now hold on one second. <coughs> hold on one second. Now, what, what's one of the main additional motives connected to gang stalking? Brain treatment. Okay? Auditorial and visual brain treatment. So this means, and make no mistake about it, what I expose in this video is not the entire reason why, how brain treatment is achieved, achieved or the reasons behind specific types of brain treatment. Just hear me out. Now... Okay, so I turned on the other phone, and I'm going into my gallery right now on it in order to bring up some stamp screenshots, and then I'll show them to you once I bring it up. <sighs> Bear with me a second. Hold on a second. I gotta do something here. Now, because I'm going to show you something that I'm going to write out and I want you to be able to see it physically. Okay, now the things you're about ready to hear are absolutely going on. Now, they might not be specifically going on with me, but you got to also remember. Sorry, I'm smoking a cigarette while I'm talking to you. Uh, what you got to also remember is this, and remember this very well, and remember, write down my descriptions. Gang stalking, mass murder, and whores, these rape and murdering animals, are using uh, psychiatrists and psychologists in medical centers, hospitals, medical clinics and other places, including even universities, to label gang stalking victims ha as having one or, or, or more mental illnesses. These types of mental illnesses can be, but not limited to, concerning the descriptions, schizophrenia, paranoid schizophrenia, uh, schizophrenic affective disorder, delusional, bipolar, dementia, uh, obsessive compulsive behaviors, and, and on and on. Now, you got to remember that's done for massive reasons. Illegal probate control schemes, insurance fraud schemes, discrediting the victim in court, taking away victims' rights concerning court proceedings because they can claim that you're not able to represent yourself, okay, or even contribute to any part of any hearing. Hold on. <coughs> and that includes the court. Say if you're, or you're a victim and you're set up for a staged event and they arrest you. Hold on and or put you in county mental health or a, a neighboring hospital psychiatric floor, then what they can do is petition the court through the psychiatrist connected to these places to petition your mental health history that's on your record. So if you have any intentionally, purposely, falsely di mental diagnoses from prior targeting, including from other states, they can get a hold of that falsified documentation and use it against you currently. And always remember those stage events lie about the victim's behavior during the event, and then that gives the police a normal apparent reason to make the falsified police report suggesting you're mentally ill, and to petition you in the psychiatric ward where then the organized crime syndicated doctors play their role. So if they can call you paranoid schizophrenia, schizophrenic, and then while you're in that psychiatric floor, they can request a court hearing, you will not even be allowed to say anything. 
to defend yourself concerning anything that happened that brought you to that psychiatric floor. What will happen is that the psychiatrist will advocate uh, under the guise of advocating for you and either a in real time court proceeding in a courthouse and or through teleconferencing. And then what that sick bitch animal will do is tell 1,000% complete total lies. Okay? And again, that's done for some of the statements I've already made. So I expose these, I expose my exposures so you can see that this, this government ain't nothing but a, me, a, a, a physical and mental raping bitch where they're treating human beings like nothing but cattle. This government literally perceives the citizens as being cattle. Literally, literally, period. Because racketeering schemes and straw man racketeering schemes and straw man insurance fraud schemes, they got to have a physical person for that. They don't view you as being an independent uh, person with your constitutionally guaranteed rights. And they don't look at you as somebody who's got the right to have self-determination over your rights. They look at you as an object to make money off of. Period. End of fucking story. So, I want you to take a look at a couple things here. And this is going to help us. Is this going to help? So, if you say that you're enduring specific things through this crime, they'll look for a normal, including through videos, statements in your blog. If they can prove you made the statements in your blog, they'll look for normal apparent excuses concerning why they supposedly have stumbled across one of your videos. So, they can use your statements against you in the video. By the way, let me show you something here real fast. I want you to look at this. This is an ultrasound detector. This comes from an ultrasound detector app. Remember, go to Google and type in ultrasonic sound bone conduction connected to gang stalking crimes. Okay? Now, not, I got close to or maybe even over 1,000 snap screenshots taken from logged events from this, from this app. On at least three phones, 98% of them were all produced as a result of me using this app at wooded areas. At least three to 400 of them were used or were done at this very fucking spot I'm sitting in right now. Now, I'm in a wooded area. So why the fuck would an ultrasound detector pick up ultrasound in my environment, especially at these levels? Okay, including going all the way up to and past 50 and 60 dBSPLs and at these time rates. So, what is ultrasonic sound bone conduction and what it, what, how many different uh, motives are there concerning why it's being used? It can be used to assist in auditory brain treatment. Can you also put visual imagery on a ultrasonic sound sound wave probably okay now do you really think say to yourself honestly with a mature posture do you honestly believe say if you got up in your home and went to a park and it's a massive park there's nothing in the park at all whatsoever except for what's naturally in a park a bunch of trees bushes trails and that's it so if you put if you went to google play I don't know if you got an Android device or not. Let me minimize this for a second. I, okay, I don't have... Let me see one second here. All right, so I don't have the Google Play app downloaded at this time on this phone. So I, I was going to show you what a Google Play app icon looks like. But at this time, I, I had that disabled on that particular phone that I'm, I'm, I'm pointing to right now. Because if you have Google Play... If you got the ability to put Google Play on your computer, tablet, and or phone... You can go to Google Play Store app and type in in their search box ultrasound detector app, which is what I did. As a result of it getting downloaded on my phone, once it got downloaded, I brought it up. And then what it does is it records 120 uh, second cycles of events of this recording and picking up ultrasound in my environment for 120 seconds 
once it goes through a, a 120 second cycle then it starts over all, all over again and then this button up here when you press this that will enable you to send the event to your email account so if you go to a fucking park a massive park that has no houses buildings no cell phone towers on it no telephone wire or no uh no electrical wiring or um you know uh uh, 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 you know, like the telephone poles and, and all the other type of apparatuses that are used. Uh, I, right now, I'm forgetting the name of it. You know, the things that you see in your community dedicated to power lines. It's just a park. Nothing but vegetation and a trail. So if you went to a park that has none of this other shit in it, and the only thing that's in it is a park, and you brought up an ultrasonic, an ultrasound detector app and picked up massive, massive readings on it, you would have to say to yourself, why the fuck would ultrasound be in a park? Well, it's the same fucking thing concerning a wooded area. It's the same thing if you brought the app up in a grocery store and caught it. So, going back just for a second. I got at least 300 of these just on this phone alone. Now, is ultrasonic sound bone conduction... A, uh, is an additional reason why that technology is used in gang stalking crimes is it used as a delivery tool for our voice to skull google all my statements baby cakes sweethearts and sweet peas and munchkin butts now <laughs> I want you to look at this now this right here is a snap screenshot from a tweet that was made uh, uh, I forgot what date it is let me check the details on it Okay, so I'm pressing the details on it so I can show what date this tweet was made. <sighs> let, let it, uh, December 11, 2020. So that was just, uh, six days ago. Okay. Now, so that was a tweet put on Twitter just six days ago. And what do you see, what, what do you see concerning the text? You can take a snap screenshot of that if you want to. Okay. What you see in these two pictures, this one and this one, that is the left eye and this is my right eye. Okay, I'm going to zoom in on it so you can see what the hell they are. This is not a film in my eyes because of cataracts. I don't have cataracts. These are remote neural monitoring, non-consensual remote neural monitoring eye lens implants. Okay, and I just made a video... Uh, in this Periscope account here in the last few days it's a very it's this extremely detailed video and that video literally shows the video that these snap screenshots were taken from okay these come from a live Periscope broadcast <clears throat> the day I discovered these non-consensual remote neural monitoring and lens implants being in my eyes here in San Diego on June 3rd 2020 okay now, this allows the perpetrators who put these in my eyes to see through my eyes. Okay. Now, I'm just going to give a brief description concerning how they were able to be seen in this video and not in many others. <coughs> so, let me get back out of this particular one snap screenshot. So, I can bring up another one that will assist and complement my statements that need to be made so you'll understand how these uh, remote neural monitoring eye lens implants became visible. Okay. Now, I want you to look very close at this one. When you look over to the left, like, say, if you're looking down straight at this right now, let me just point to where I'm, I'm, I'm referring to. Let me zoom in a little bit closer. Now, look at the end of where my thumb is at right now, the white part of the eye. If you look close enough, you should be able to see some sacks there on the surface of the eye. Let me see if I can bring a better snap screenshot of, uh, up of this because I know I got them. And you'll understand this in a minute. Here's another snap screenshot. Look at that. Now you can absolutely determine that these are uh, remote neuromonitoring eye lens implants in my eyes. 
put there non-consensually. I had no memory, recollection at all, in any way, shape, or form, not even a second of it, of how these got in my eyes. This was literally done through surgery. Yet I had no memory whatsoever of any aspect of it. Where it was done at, or who did it, at all. At least at this time I don't. You should also research memory blanking and remote neural monitoring. Because it does got the ability to blank your memory. It's also got the ability to interrupt it. All right, give me a second here. All right, look at these. Look at all these additional snap screenshots of the ultrasonic, uh, ultrasound detector app being brought up. Massive, continuous high readings. Okay, so bear with me a second here. I'm looking for a specific snap screenshot so I can complement my statement and detail to you just briefly, but you'll get the point. You'll understand what's said and why. A better picture that shows you how these remote neural monitoring islands implants became visible in a live periscope broadcast on 06, on 06 03 2020. And by the way, periscope's getting ready to end. They're going to be closing down per, uh, permanently as of March 31st, 2021. Now, I don't understand what uh, it says you're only going to be able to read do a readout of what's in your uh, existing Periscope account. So I don't know what that means. If, if that video disappears, the video of the remote neural monitoring islands implants being discovered, if that account disappears and or the video disappears and or I can't get access to it in order to present it in court and or to showcase it in any videos, that's fucking being predicted right now. Because the internet and Periscope is already letting you know how you, what you can do in order to archive your broadcast. But you got to remember, I'm a continued, everyday gang-stalking victim. They can do anything against me on any and all dates that, that, that is done with, with at least one motive, which would be to do things to create effects in order to intentionally sabotage my schedule. Because I got five separate Periscope accounts that I got to try and get into and then follow the steps in order to harvest and archive the videos of those accounts before March 31st, 2021. And I'm in the midst of preparing a move right now. Okay? All right, hold on a second. My cigarette went out. They know that evidence video is online. Trust me, they fucking know it. Google cyber surveillance and gang stalking. Mm. All right, so check this shit out. Sorry about the language. Okay, so I'm, I'm continuing to scroll. Just give me another few seconds here. Because I know I got mass pictures here of, of these. Uh, Alright, so let's see if this one will do it. Alright, this one's better. Alright, now what you want to do... I'm going to set the tip of my thumb up against a, portion, a part of my eye. Okay? So, do you see where the tip of my thumb is at? concerning this part of the white part of the eye. <laughs> so let me zoom in on this a little bit better. And then let the phone zoom in correctly. Now, what do you think you see there? Those are water fluid sacs and eye fluid sacs that formed on, my, on both the eyes, <laughs> on the surface of the eyes, my face and head was being hit on the a night of June 2nd, 2020 at the very fucking spot I'm making this video at right now on the Octopus Street location. And then the next day on June 3rd, 2020, at least 22 times as I was standing outside of Vaughn's grocery store in La Jolla to charge my chargers and my computers with direct energy weapons. Now, when you're hit on any part of your body with direct energy weapons, it will cause the water molecules of that part of the body to, to bunch up and to form into sacs. Now, since they were hit in the face and head, it also caused the eye fluid in the eye to bunch up into sacs on top, on the surface of the eye. Well, these remote neural monitoring islands implants, they are on, they are on the surface of the eye. So if the sacks of water and eye fluid appeared on the surface of the eye, it pushed out the back side of the remote neuromontrian islands implants out, causing them to be viewable. 
So that video exposes not only the remote neural monitoring islands implant, but it also fucking exposes the torture through direct energy weapons. And if you went into the YouTube channel, A Simulated Reality, it's got at least one video in there that shows that these fuckers can boil your eyes. Because the, the, the brain and eyes also experience what is known as magnetophosphorine. If you went to YouTube and typed in John Hall's satellite terrorism and watched at least 30 or 40 of his videos, you're going to eventually hear him say that. And what that means is that when your face and head is being hit with directed energy weapons, you got to remember that's directed energy, microwaves, non-ionizing radiation. And that's causing the brain to experience a lot of heat. Now, as a result, what happens is that this energy gets processed also, not only through the brain, okay, but it also gets processed through the optical nerve and through the retina. As a direct result, when you got your eyes closed and you're being hit in the head and or face with this sick shit, what will happen is that that energy will convert it to light. And you'll see a light show in your visual cortex. Because what, what that's doing is the, light, the optical nerve is presenting that, um, that, uh, that uh, it's, it's like a, a light show, that almost like a fireworks light show. Where you're seeing a bunch of flashing, yellowish, even maybe even somewhat dimmed or, orange flashes of non-stop moving light. That's because your optical nerve is processing the energy and converting it into light. It's called magnetophosphorine, and it can also cause you to be blind. It can create a lot of vision effects, including long-term, including permanent. That's a fucking loot So, just my statements alone concerning this proves two things. That I've been non-consensually implanted, criminally, and they're being used for sadistic torture to assist in sadistic torture, which I'll touch on here in a couple minutes. And for illegal, extreme, illegal, sophisticated surveillance. When they made me homeless, I'm forced to utilize wooded areas. So when I'm out and about in the community going to a grocery store to get groceries and water, I take certain buses from this area. I mean, when I leave this area, I walk to a bus stop to then take a bus to go to the grocery store. I then leave the grocery store with my groceries and then rehop on a, on a bus that then takes me to a bus stop. I get off the bus, take my bike off the bus, put my groceries on the handlebars, and start riding past everything I ride past to get to the spot. That means my eyes are seeing street signs, houses, the environment. They're seeing the street signs of the area of where I get off of the bus at. They're seeing what bus ride I'm on. They're seeing the neighborhood I'm in. And this is used also for legal tracking. So they can know where you're at to assist in letting... To assist in you being surveilled in real time so they can determine where you're at so they can stage the events to stage probable cause including between you and property owners so they're using the own victim's eyes as a surveillance tool criminally past the class A felony level they don't allow you to approve it they don't allow you to prove that they're there hold on that was something on the home screen of the phone they don't allow you to prove that they're there through medical centers, hospitals, medical clinics, and or any private eye doctor that you might go to within your community. Is NSA letters one of the legal apparent instruments they're using for that? If they see that you've discovered these through cyber surveillance, and then they see you're looking up eye doctors or hospitals to go to, so you can get tested to prove they're there medically, so a medical report can be made, so you can then use that in court, well, they know where the fuck you're going because they see who you're looking up on the internet. Then again, through the in-real time tracking, they can see what direction you're headed. If they see that you're heading in the direction and the routes to, to take to go to those places, they'll fucking either go there physically and or make a phone call. And or send a fax to the place you're going to. And then they're told not to assist you in any way and not to provide you with any documentation concerning what you have in you. You should also go to YouTube and type in Roger Tulsa's Electronic Harassment. Watch at least 20 of his videos. And Roger Tulsis owns a company called Bugsweek.com that helps gang stalking victims get tested to determine any and all implants in them.
if they can be discovered in the equipment he uses and the equipment he uses runs into the hundred thousands of dollars it's very sophisticated equipment that's Roger Tulsis from www.bugsuite.com Melinda, Melinda Kidder from Columbian Investigations in Missouri she has also tested multiple victims and let me uh, do something here for a second I want to see if I can do something here hold on Oh, Lord, help me. Okay, now, go to Google. Write this down. Go to Google. And type in at Google. Uh, Dr. Hildy. Eight, uh, her first name is spelled, I believe it's spelled, Dr. Hildy, H-L-I... Um, I'm sorry, uh, H-I-L-D-E-G-A-R-D, Stanninger. Brain Chips, it's a book, Brain Chips and Messagens. Now, these remote neural monitoring islands implants are in that book. I just ordered it yesterday through Amazon. It's supposed to be in my P.O. box by no later than the 22nd of December. Okay. And also, you can go to YouTube search box and type in Romola D Reports. That's her YouTube channel. Techno Crime Fighters, episode 58. Now, if it doesn't bring up episode 58 right there, then you can go into her YouTube channel and look for the playlist that is titled Techno Crime Fighters. Bring that up, and then when you do, scroll through the videos within it to episode 58. These every remote neural my two lens implants are extensively discussed. I just exposed it in a video I made yesterday. All right, now, hold on one second. I'm going to play an audio right now that's, uh, it's, it's part of the audio dedicated to that video, so give me a second, let me find it. All right, I got to set the phone down just for a second. Second, I'm, I'm getting the audio file now. I gotta scroll through some dates. So I got a lot of audio files on this tape recorder. It's gonna be taking about two more seconds here. Okay, hold on. Okay, so I'm gonna play uh, a little bit of this audio, but this this part I'm gonna play you from the Techno Crime Fighters episode 58. That video, again, is on Ramola D. Report's YouTube channel. It's a playlist within her channel dedicated to the Techno Crime Fighter uh, interviews podcast. <laughs> this is only a small exposure uh, that is exposed within that video. Now, I want you to listen to this and listen to this carefully. It might take a couple minutes for it to get to that part of it, <clears throat> but I don't want to fast forward into this audio file because then I might go past the part and then have to rewind again and go through all that. So I want you to listen to this. And again, let's see if this video doesn't get published. Let's see if anything happens that interrupts it. ...and self-assembling thingies and devices that are able to enter the human body, traverse the veins, the arteries, coagulate, self-assemble, replicate, as you indeed found out with your analysis of um, Melanie's throat implants, right? Because that uh, presumably is something that's self-assembled in her throat. It wasn't implanted at home. Thank you. 
alloys and just heat them with microwave radiation. Oh, but there's also, if you go right now, there are. I can, you know, post the links when I eventually find them because I did a bit of research on nanotech out there. They do have self-assembling nanotech, and there, there are videos now on YouTube which will show you how these tiny little thingies get together and start forming chains, and then they get progressively larger, and then they do do precisely what you were talking about. You know, they kind of self-assemble into some kind of shape. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, what I have seen is um, certainly fibers growing, and that happens a lot. And uh, actually talking about diagnostics that people can do, um, I have seen um, you know scans of people where they, they use um, ultraviolet lights, known as black lights, and you can see the fiber network under the skin. And the fiber network should not be, naturally, your body should not be reflecting you know, this sort of light, or should not be showing up under ultraviolet or under black light that it does and you can get black light torches um you know off amazon off, off the internet um but the other thing is also in terms of diagnostics um something to do is if you feel that you have eye implants um you might not actually feel the, the object but you have the feeling that your stalkers can uh, look through your eyes what you could have on your lens is thin film technology completely transparent completely you know you wouldn't feel it you wouldn't even feel the readout which also sits on your on the white end of your lens but apparently these um, these things do show up again under ultraviolet light, known as black light, and the way they reflect is different from your net, um, natural lens and the iris. They will reflect, I'm just uh, in the meantime looking for an image of this, which I've seen in this book, they will reflect turquoise or, um, or purple, I think. And then here in this book, which you can also use for court, there's an image of people exactly with this set up. So um, this is the eye of horse effect, okay? When this is what Millicent reports as well. I reported on that in her article because she has information from medical doctors who actually examined her eyes and found that something like a turquoise ring, I think. Exactly. And here you can you can actually see what it looks like. And the idea is you can, you can take the, you know, even this is why I should invest in this book because you can scan this and put it straight into your court bundle and then quote the book. Um, but also you can do this diagnostic yourself and once you know what it looks like you can buy, you know, a torch, don't shine it straight into your eye, but you can reflect off it. And what this means is if you get this odd effect and compare it to people who are not targeted, um, what this means is you just have a very thin crystal layer on your lens, it's like thin film technology, it's transparent crystals, but they can be used as a readout. So it's almost like having a little, you know, LCD camera lens, uh, you know, in your eye. And then, of course, they can see exactly what you can see as well, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's so important to sort of just speak openly about all of these things that people are reporting and people are finding, and for which we do indeed find evidence and co correlation, you know, in books like this, which are actually speaking openly about the technology that's out there. And because uh, we, what, what we are actually reporting is, you know, harmful, pernicious, non-consensual implantation of all of these medical devices and, and nanotech. So. I think you might have to unmute Millicent. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's when she was gone. Did that do it? Not yet? Oh my goodness, so they're not letting me unmute the I can, I can still see the mute symbol. Oh boy. I'm trying to um, unmute over here. It's just a joke. I mean, really, the hacking is, is getting... Yeah, yeah, this is hacking. It's definitely hacking, because I'm not uh, muting her here. Catherine, can you hack from your end? Because I think you may have done it from your end, where you uh, muted her. I, I, I'm not a moderator, and this is the controls, yeah. No, now the, now the symbol is gone. Now we should be able to hear her. Say something I'm going to hold it. I was oh, trying to hear you, Millicent. You can hear? Oh no, but well the symbol is gone, but I still can't hear, no I can't hear you. Oh my goodness. No, no. Can you see me? No, I still can't. Oh. Oh no, not again. Can I hear you? Oh. Yeah, no, I can hear you. I can hear you. <laughs> well, I 
Alex, you know, I just realized something. They've moved the volume down. This, I did not do this oh. myself. <laughs> I've just moved the volume up for all of us. See, someone had moved it down. This is so bizarre. This is our control room, supposedly, on my desktop, and it's been moved down. So I moved it back up. Wow. We were just talking about all of those different kinds of, you know, implanted devices that you certainly have reported and you have found medical evidence for, right? Right. Um, and and let me get it with the black light. Sorry, just yes, before, you, before you start, can you turn the screen down? Because the shadow, the shadow. Okay, now I can see you. Thank you. Sorry, that's perfect. That's, that's bizarre. It is bizarre. I could not get my uh, tablet repositioned so that it would show me. But let me get to use the black light to identify the purple ring around my Irish. But when I'm wearing contact lenses, and you know contact lenses are as clear as plastic, as uh, saran wrap, you can see the purple ring. Wow. You mean um, somebody without any kind of, um, you know, right. zooming in device, like, what are they called, magnifying lens, uh, can see it? With the naked eye, right, you can see that purple view around my iris. It must be something, because if you put the contact lens on, then uh, that already has a different perspective index, and sometimes it has, uh, it shifts the colors, so, uh, you know, you get this uh, frequency shift sometimes in the, in the material, just, you know, separates out the colors, so then if it, it makes it visible, it means that it doubles the, you know, the refractive index of the implant plus the contact lens amplifies the effect of the, of the thin film technology that's on your lens, but it's really good to know for people so you know maybe buy some in, in Europe you have these disposable contact lenses you know with no strengths or barely, barely any strengths you can buy for a few euros and uh, you know just put it in and see if you can actually tell a difference that's an idea because that's exactly what, what I do when I'm wearing the contact lens you can you can clearly see it and is it something that I put the hard lens that you're that you're wearing no, I'm wearing soft lens. Yeah. See, that's perfect because he has said that you can buy it in, a, you know, in like a shop where you can buy shampoo and stuff like that. You can buy contact lenses these days for barely, really? like a few, a few dollars, you know, like the equivalents. Wow. Um, yeah. You have to pay hundreds of dollars over here. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. You don't have to get a prescription and all that. You can't just uh, buy them off the shelf, I don't think. Yeah. Right. I mean, you can these days. And it's just a piece of, you know, transparent plastic, so there's no, no reason why it should be so expensive, you know? Well, are you talking about decorative lenses or something that are not prescribed? <laughs> Once the reflective index, um, so you can just choose, you know, is it like 1.75 oh. dial tree? So minus 1.75 and so on, you know, 1.5. That's really interesting. You know, for a long time, I used to wait till I went home to India every summer, and then I would renew my contact lenses over there, and then I discovered, well, the price over there has shifted up, and it's exactly the same as the American prices now. It's so pointless. Might as well get them here. <laughs> but it's still about 500 bucks. That's insane, because wow. to manufacture you know, transparent bits of plastic of this size, I mean, you could just manufacture, you know, like a ton for, what, you know, five dollars in some Chinese, you know, uh, plant. That's, See, that's, that's very interesting because, you know, in a sense, contact lenses are something that are sort of socially acceptable, right? Over time, culturally acceptable. implants, contemporary implants, we stick them in our eyes, we don't think twice about them. But these other implants that we're talking about, they're invasive, and when they're non-consensual, they're most definitely not culturally or socially acceptable. Um, and so we have some real criminals running about in the medical industry, in the pharmaceutical industry, and um, in the defense and intelligence industry, and security and surveillance, who are actually engaging in non-consensual covert implantation, you know, via the national clandestine services and so on and so forth. And, you know, at one point I remember trying to do a whole, um, uh, trying to get uh, an understanding 
understanding of what clandestine really meant in, for these agencies. And I think what I discovered was that when something is clandestine or when something comes under the clandestine label, um, it's even worse than above top secret or whatever, you know. It, it means that even any awareness of it is not to be spoken about by anybody. So it's so thoroughly buried, you know. So that's part, I think, of the kind of mystique that we are dealing with here with non-consensual implants and, and covert implantation and the activities, the criminal activities of these dark agencies that are engaging in these dark ops, you know, all over the place. So. But in any case, sorry, um, Catherine, your mic is turned off. Remote, move your screen. You are showing only part of your body. Oh, really? Yeah. Can you see my face? I can see your face, but the uh, part of the left side is cut off. Push it over to your to your left side. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay, I'm wondering if you know the kind of um, the, the video that's showing on each one test is accurate or not. I guess we'll find out when we look at what's um, shown up on the screen finally for everybody else. But um, cause Sorry, what was, I, I couldn't find the image. Um, the, <laughs> yes, when I was talking, I couldn't actually unmute myself. But one of the things I wanted to throw in, and I, I know, um, you know, for people who, who haven't been following this crime cartel for a very long time, it's always a bit, you know, out there when I mention it, but um, you have to take um, take into account what cartel signaling, so what the cartel itself puts out as advertising. And uh, one of the things that I've, I've shown before, but I will just remind people so that they have a mental image of what we're talking about, um, cartel signaling have, um, you know, occurs in music videos, and if you look um, at the Taylor Swift um, video called Ready For It, they actually show you these eye implants, okay? So here it is, it's kind of like stylized, but that's exactly what you're talking about. And the person who has an eye implant um, on their lens, will, uh, they can be, if they don't know they have this eye implant, they can be showing all sorts of stuff. So here it kind of implies that, um, you know, the person sees some sort of diagnostic, almost robotic um, sort of information. But uh, the reason why I make such a big thing out of that is, first of all, the cartel has been advertising this for a very long time, quite blatantly, quite out there. Also, they're advertising it as something cool to have, okay, so it's quite normal. I think a lot of them, a lot of the cartel members already have these eye implants, but if you do not know you have them, one of the things that they can play with you is that using artificial intelligence and fast algorithms, they can overlay images on the images that you see. So, stuff that I've heard from uh, victims is that suddenly you like, look into the middle of your room and you see a crawling snake in the middle of your room. Now, it's not there. It's just a projection onto this lens, okay? It's just a little movie that appears and has been, you know, broadcast in. But unless you know that it's just projected onto your lens, you will think, oh my God, there's a snake. Or you will think they make stuff appear into the room like a hologram. And it's actually just on your lens. And this is why you can't see it. It's real in the sense that you have been shown it as much as you seeing a movie is real but it's not actually an object in the room. So this is things appearing in the room could be something on your eye, certainly, to, you know, what's typical for the CIA and all inside agencies is anything that's threatening or to do with death and injury. So if you suddenly see dead people in your flat lying around and then disappearing, it's an eye, you know, most likely an eye implant. But also the other thing is that um, they will try to give you the impression from that, like, for example, overlaying devil's heads on people who are you are talking to. So you are speaking to somebody and suddenly you, you're speaking to the devil or some really grisly face that has been overlaid. But that is just CGI. It's computer generated, um, you know, graphics and um, stuff like that. And that is just the kind of game they play with 
these stupid nasal implants. So, and you know, they can also they can also do CGI, can't they, through the BCI, CBI interfaces, the brain computer, interface, right? So they are pumping in synthetic images through the brain computer interface. And again, that's the story of a brain chip. There, there is a neurochip involved, you know. So there's an actual physical device. There you go. So uh, this is something, you know, this may sound like very esoteric information to some people, but this is modern science. This is current day science. And it's also, I mean, it's both from the public domain and it's from the dark ops at this point in time, because there's a lot of disclosure in the public domain currently about brain research and about brain interface research, brain computer interface research, about artificial intelligence, the internet of things, you know, filling the head with nanotech and connecting brains to the internet. If you recall, just this last week, in fact, Sherry sent us around that video, right, from MIT Media Labs of that guy uh, with a little bit of div a little device stuck over his left ear or something and connected to his brain, whereby he was able to think a thought, project it onto the computer screen, and then make things happen. So he was showing synthetic telepathy, but through this brain device, he was able to order the 60 Minutes producer, the young producer, a pizza based on his instructions to the computer and to through the internet and they did eventually get a pizza at the end of that show exactly <laughs> okay so now that is part of the audio from the techno crime fighters video series video episode number 58 again go to youtube search box and type in Ramola d reports <coughs> hold on <coughs> Hold on more second. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just getting over a nose cold. In fact, it's actually still going on. I got some plum going on there. Excuse me. Now, I want you to listen to me and listen to me closely. Again, you can go to YouTube search box and type in at YouTube search box, Ramola. Her name is spelled R-A-M-O-L-A. -A. Ramola D, Techno Crime Fighters. Okay, uh, podcast or forum. Um, now, in order to bring up any or any one of the techno uh, videos that that's got techno crime fighters within the title of it, but you can also go into your YouTube account and look for the playlist that is labeled techno crime fighters. You want to once you get to that playlist, what you want to do is you want to look for episode fifty-eight. It appears those videos are stacked on top of each other concerning the sequential numbers like video 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. So you shouldn't have any problems at all in finding it. Now, the audio I just played that was tape recorded from that YouTube video is not the only uh, details discussed concerning these non-consensual remote neural monitoring islands implants. And what did you hear Dr. Catherine Horton state? She openly stated that it's a thin film. Now, my fellow American citizens, I want you to also understand something. These, these, what you see here, these are not cataracts at all. In fact, check this out. Do you know how, like, sometimes when you wake up in the morning and you got that gooey stuff in your eyes and you take it out, okay? Uh, if you got a cold, sometimes it might uh, have a little bit more discoloration to it, okay? Now... That type of gooey stuff can also get trapped behind the island's implant and the back part of it and the eye itself. And then you end up seeing little itty bitty, uh, little itty bitty floaters. Okay? That's not cataracts either. And the reason why I know it is because. And those days where I've experienced that, what I would do then is just endlessly rub my eye until I can get the gooey thing situated down here in the corner and then pick it out. Okay? So, from what I understand so far about cataracts and the cloudy stuff you see in your eyes, uh, some of that could be uh, eye fluid caused because of the cataracts, but uh, the uh, the the, the, the major part of what cataracts produces cannot be taken out of the eye. Okay? Now, I'm just referring, referring to the gooey stuff that's in your eye. Well, sometimes when that gooey stuff is in my eyes, because sometimes when you sleep real hard, 
for whatever reason, the body decides to secrete more of that. Okay? Well, sometimes it will secrete it in a real big way. And then they form into the, just little itty-bitty bunches. But then they don't move around freely in the eye. So you can take it out in the corner of the eye like most people do. Like in this corner here or that or the other side corner. Like most people would do if they would free, uh, be able to freely, freely float about in your eye. Or if, if they're trapped like a right on the, the, the rim of the eye, you could then rub your eye to kind of get it disjointed out of place so you can take it out of the corner of the eyes. Well, if you got these remote neural monitoring eye lens implants in you, sometimes that gooey shit can get stuck behind the back part of the eye lens implant and the surface of the eye. So you got to endlessly rub your eye in order to get it reintroduced away from that so you can take it out from the corners of the eyes. So... If you ever see a video where these remote neural monitoring eye lens implants may be visible in any measure in those videos, and then if there's any uh, gooey stuff that might be trapped between the surface of the eye and the back surface of the lens implant, that's not cataract shit. That's just the gooey normal eye fluid that, that, uh, that secretes in all human beings' eyes. And the only reason why it might form up into bunches and maybe you had a day or night to where you had more eye fluid secretion but then the remote neural monitor back part of the back side of the remote neural monitor nylon's lens implant can uh, trap it into a fixed position okay uh, so with these little fucking six satanic cores if I am ever lucky enough to see these crumbling insane animals in core they can then claim well you're showing us a picture you're showing us a video as long as that video don't disappear Okay, uh, and you're suggesting the remote neural monitoring eye lens implant, so I tell you what we'll do is we'll court order you to see a medical, um, uh, an eye doctor of our choosing, or any other eye doctor, even one of your choosing, and then they can privately collude with them from behind the scenes, and then he, that doctor is told to diagnose you with cataracts, or any other else thing that they could say is producing this type of imagery. And check this out, they can even intentionally induce cataracts, through direct energy weapons attacks. But even if you got cataracts, it still doesn't mean the remote neural monitoring eye lens implant ain't there. So you gotta understand something about gang stalking. These sick, filthy bitch, lying, criminally insane, filthy, maggot, rat ass animal whores, they will apply any excuse concerning what's happening to you and they uh, uh, to be anything except for gang stalking. They will claim your evidence is not evidence connected to gang stalking, but to something else. They'll claim you came down with uh, uh, throat cancer, face cancer, brain cancer because you just came down with it or it's in your family history, not because it was induced through direct energy weapons attacks. These people are nothing but mass murder and whores. It is literally all they will ever be, is nothing but literal mass murder and whores. They're torturing tens of thousands of gang suffering victims all over the United States as I speak. Now, let's start segueing into one of the aspects of the subject matter, which is the motivation of this video. Now, I went out of my way to help you see that these are here. When the video I made yesterday, which will be located right in the profile, right below this video. Once I publish this video, it's going to go into my profile on my account, of my broadcast. So go into my profile after this video is made and look at the video that will be positioned right below it. That video shows me playing the video, the Periscope video, of the day the remote neural monitoring on those implants was discovered. This is a snap screenshot from that video. So when you bring that video, when you see that video play out, and you see the video being played in the video, take snap screenshots as it's being uh, outwardly shown that they're there. Because these in remote neural monitoring now those implants were captured in a live Periscope broadcast dedicated to another phone's Periscope account. Okay? So, now, let me explain to you some of the things occurring in gang stalking. If any gang stalking victim states that a specific thing is happening to them, that specific thing they know the victim can't prove, or at least can't prove yet, they can take those statements and say that those statements are stemming from the symptomology of a mental illness in order to lock you up, including for illegal probate control schemes, which is connected to the original motivation of why you were targeted to begin with. So if a gang stalking victim who's being sadistically tortured through many different technological resources 
that these satanic horrors have, can that victim find other ways, use, use creative language in order to convey the descriptions of those tortures without claiming that those descriptions are related to their own specific torture? Meaning that I can expose anything and you can always guess who I may be talking about. Read between the lines, sweethearts and sweet peas, because when you read between the lines, you can imagine who I may be referring to. Hold on. Now, in many of my video exposures dedicated to the five simple periscope accounts, write this down. Hold on. Hmm. What you want to do is you want to go to YouTube search box and type in Emma's and Mary, MTS, Gangstalk, Oh My God, Suck My DI, and then the number symbol on your keyboard twice, right next to the DI, and that actually represents DICK. One of the main things that they've been doing around me, concerning me, every single place I've went, and 90% of all places I've lived at, at least, it, uh, that, uh, concerning what this crime has been doing to me, along all routes, every place I've went, and 90% at least of everywhere I've lived in the last nine years in San Diego, is buying through them propping up people along my routes so they can stand around me, walk by me, congregate around me in the places I go to, including outside of them, okay, in order to have those people repeat, suck dick, gang stalk, oh my god, gang stalk, oh my god, suck dick. That's related to the sensitization method of gang stalking, repeating words and phrases, repeating identical words and phrases. Okay, hold on a second. Now, so that MTS gang stalk, oh my god, suck my DI, and then the number symbol twice from your keyboard is the title of a YouTube playlist. Now, that's an older YouTube playlist, one of at least 40 that's online right now, that's got massive evidence in it that openly shows you what? That people are being propped up around me to repeat it. Some of the videos will show that it's being massively, continually repeated as I'm in the environment that it's being repeated at. The only way that that can be done is by and through illegal criminal tracking. They got to know where you're at in order to prop up the harassment. Now, that's actually connected to the motivation, though, of uh, burn entrainment. And when you're being harassed, the gang stalking victim is going to have a thought response, an internal thought response, and uh, more than likely some intentionally stimulated emotions like anger, hate, even fear. Because when you realize you're being stalked, that's going to induce fear. So while they're auditorily burning training you by forcing the brain to hear the same phonetic sounds, the sounds that the words make, you're also, the brain is also being stimulated to experience specific emotions based c concerning the harassment. That now becomes not only a, neural, a neurally entrained pathway, auditorily and neurally entrained pathway, but it now becomes an auditorily and neurally entrained pathway that stems up into a neural network. Because now brain states and, and emotional clusters are being connected to it. Okay? And then they heterodyne the EEG signature frequency readouts. Okay, there are potentiated frequency readouts and the emotional cluster frequency readouts. Alright, and so just research heterodyning, remote neural monitoring, and gang stalking extensively. Some of the people that you can research concerning this would be XCIA, Dr. Robert Duncan, Dr. John Hall, satellite terrorism, and so on and so forth. Now let me go back to one of these snap screenshots because when I played that audio to you that you just heard a couple of minutes ago... You heard Ramola D say, when Dr. Catherine Horton said they can project imagery of snakes being in your room so that you're, you're, you're being tricked into believing that a snake is actually in your room, okay, uh, living room, bedroom, whatever, and that's because what they're doing is that these remote neural monitoring islands implants, it enables them to send imagery to it. That imagery is then processed through the retinal nerve to the optical nerve to the visual cortex, and then your mind sees it. And that includes these remote neural monitoring islands implants being used for electronic synthetic dreams connected to gang stalking and remote neural monitoring. Google all my statements. And all of those electronic synthetic dreams connected to remote neural monitoring are nothing but sadistic torture, where you're forced to see... Uh, women being raped, children being hurt, animals being hurt, bestiality images, a bunch of sick file shit. 
Now, when Mola D said, as they were talking about that, she said another thing that can assist in this is a BCI implant, uh, is a brain to computer interface implant. Now, this brain to computer interface implant, all you got to do is Google that description to gang stalking, and you'll be able to eventually find this pictorial attachment so that you'll be able to read out the text that's associated to it. Because all these little texts right here have a little line that go from the brain to the text showing that, that the description of each text is dedicated to the area of the brain that is being monitored and even neurally influenced and, and or stimulated as a result of that function of the brain interfacing with the implant. And, and that can include also anything that the computer is sending to the brain, including the visual images. So they can even send visual images to, to the visual cortex through just the brain to computer interface implant. BCI implants. And the imagery that is sent to the visual cortex, either through the islands implant and or just directly to the visual cortex as a result of you having a brain to computer interface implant, uh, that is done and created through high definition uh, visual equipment, which also has uh, very sophisticated uh, visual software like computer, uh, computer graphics interface and much more. Shit, there's even some Hollywood movies that are being made that shows a lot of computer-generated uh, imagery in it. Okay. So, imagine going to sleep at night, and you fall asleep, and you endure a five-hour dream watching women being sadistically raped, uh, sadistically beat up, sadistically tortured, same thing considering it happened to kids, seeing people having sex with dogs... Seeing people sucking the dick of a horse. That's how sick these fucking sick fucks are. You need to know the truth. And by the way, in at least one of the Techno Crime Fighters video series videos, it shows Ramola D talking about this. Okay? Your United States government and its intelligence agencies and the state, county, and local cops connected to these crimes and all the other satanic bastards who are connected to the sick shit, including the hospitals and the doctors and the nurses and the administrative staff, are nothing but wild, demented, depraved, sadistic, criminally insane animals. Period. Now, what did I say a minute ago that you can go to YouTube search box and type in at YouTube search box... MTS, Gang Stalk, Oh My God, and Suck My Dick. That's a playlist. And that playlist is many, many, many videos showing people being propped up around me to repeat Gang Stalk, Oh My God, and Suck Dick. Every fucking place I've went for the last nine years. And 90% of all the places I've lived at. So what do you see here? All right, hold on. This is an ear implant that is non-consensually put in gang stalking victims. It's got a, it's got a, uh, it's got a, um, sound processor. Hold on one second, because this is one of the more blurrier pictures taken from this. But anyway, so just research ear implant, cochlear ear implants and gang stalking. This enables the perpetrators to, um, it can be used to assist in voice to skull, including voice to skull with voice morphine, but it can also be used as a surveillance tool. Everything you hear, they hear. Okay, what do you notice there? Trigger words. Okay, so let me expand on this for a couple of minutes because this is one of the most relevant aspects of this friggin' video. Okay, so, ah, uh, this brain-to-computer interface implant, you can see it's got an arrow pointing to the head and an arrow pointing from the head back to a computer. That means data is being sent to the brain and data is being extracted from the brain back to the computer. Now, so, there's a part in your, of your brain that's called the audio cortex. Everything your ears hear gets, gets deciphered and broken down into specific type of uh, sound signals, and then the brain distinguishes it, and that's what enables you to understand what you hear in your audio cortex. Well, this brain-to-computer interface is monitoring every function of your brain, including the visual and auditory cort and, and, the aud and the audio cortex. And what's one of the two main motivations of gang stalking? Auditorial and visual brain entrainment. So, 
Let me light a cigarette. Hold on a second. Now, so. What's one of the two main things that they can do with this technology being in you? Well, check it out. Since the computer can send data to the brain, and since it, and since the same computer can also receive information from the brain, that means they're monitoring all your neurological functions. And it also means they can send data to the functions of the brain, including brain stimulation, visual imagery, uh, voice to skull with voice morphine, Okay, but that can also be achieved through the ear implant. And then it can monitor all your brain states, and it's also massively assisting in the entrainment. Hold on. Now, so let's break this down a little bit further. So, what I'm going to show you, what I'm showing you right here, is that this ear implant has got a sound processor. Just go to Google and type in at Google, brain to computer interface implant and gang stalking and cochlear ear implants hold on uh, sorry about the interruptions cochlear ear implants are spelled c c h o oh, let's see uh it's spelled c h o l e a r now these are under the skin they're not these are not the type of ear implants to get rested inside the ear on the outside these are underneath the skin you can't see them at all they got electrodes right here on the cochlear part of the ear that um are electronic electrodes it's got a sound processor and I believe a, 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 some type of receiver. Okay? And you notice how trigger words are there. Keep that in mind because I'm going to expand on that in a second because it correlates to my follow-up statements I'm getting ready to make. So, say if somebody walks by me and says gang stalk and or gang stalk oh my god and or oh my god and gang stalk or oh my god suck dick or gang stalk oh my god suck dick. That, if you got an ear implant in you, that, that gets processed through the sound processor of the ear implant. It gets sent to the cochlear part of the ear. That then gets sent to the audio cortex, and they're monitoring every function and feature of the brain through the brain-to-computer interface implant. Now, every single... And the monitoring means that everything that the neurological system is processing, that data is getting sent back to their computer. Therefore... They're able to determine that the ear and the audio cortex heard gang stalk on oh my god and sucked it. Now, if you went to Google search box and you, you and you clicked on that little microphone icon and then said how to make a German chocolate cake, text will appear in the Google search box how to make a German chocolate cake. What that is is sound to text translation. Right? So, when the audio cortex is processing gang stalk, oh my god, or suck dick, these are, these are what? Trigger words. For what? At least two things. The audio cortex hears it. The computer that's interfacing with the brain, including through the implant, is hearing it in the audio cortex. That, that then gets sent back to the computer. The computer translates it from sound to text. And so on their monitor and the software program within the computer is now seeing th uh, through text the words gang stalk oh my god and suck dick. Now the software can then be programmed to execute a function whenever the computer reads out gang stalk oh my god and suck dick. Meaning that but not limited to whenever the computer is reading out text gang stalk oh my god and suck dick it will then be instructed to execute, it, to execute a pre-programmed command. Like transmitting back to voice to skull, why does she want to suck his dick? Or they can then, or and or they can transmit a visual imagery of a man's dick into the visual cortex, and or onto the surface of the island's implant. That then gets processed through the retina to the optical nerve to the visual cortex. And then, they, and then when they do it over and over and over again, that becomes what? a visually entrained pathway. That visually entrained pathway then becomes a neural network because as the human brain is experiencing this trauma, because the brain is recognizing it's being done because they know what they your brain knows how it's being done because your brain is educated about these dynamics, about these attributes of this crime. Okay? Now 
So the brain is being traumatized in real fucking time. So when they transmit the visual imagery of a man's dick or a visual stream of a man jacking off or a visual stream of a dick going into an ass, literally, they will simultaneously use voice to skull and, and transmit something like, whose dick does she want to suck? Now it becomes an auditorial and visual brain entering pathway. When that's constantly repeated, it's reinforced. Once it becomes reinforced, it then produces a potentiated frequency output from it. And every time then on subsequent dates, when gang stalk, oh my god, or suck dick is set around the victim, the same step is repeated, and the brain perceives it, and the computer can then stimulate another function, like continued use of voice to skull, but it will also excite the entrained pathway, the potentiated frequency output from, from it, and then when that frequency fires, that can be used to, uh, the, the computer will recognize that it's fired, and then they can program the computer to also perpetrate a specific function of manipulation when the computer is recognizing that that uh, frequency has been fired. Let me give you an example, a fast example. Check this out. Say when you got married and your wedding song was Endless Love, okay? And 10 years down the road, you walk out of your house and you get in your car and you turn on the radio and your wedding song comes on. As a direct result, your brain is going to start retrieving visual memories of your wedding day. That's because that entrained pathway has got a lot of emotions connected to it. It's, an, it's a milestone in your life, so it's a very deeply ingrained entrained pathway. Now, even though, though, it, it, it's not necessarily have, it doesn't necessarily have a lasting high potentiated frequency output from it because it rarely gets stimulated because you rarely hear the song but since the song has such relevance to a visual memory it doesn't take much to excite it once it once the brain recognizes what it is through association it will then stimulate those visual memories they know all of this about the brain okay and what are they saying along my routes? Gang suck, oh my god, suck dick. And what does this say? Trigger words. Down here, it openly shows that gang stalking is directly connected to the trigger words. The, the um, sound processor of the ear implant hears it, deciphers it, and then other implants are activated. Like, including the brain to computer interface implant. Now, I want you to listen to another thing these six satanic fucking whores are doing to victims. Let me bring back up the gallery so I can bring back the remote neuromyotrino lens implant. They can transmit visual image, imagery onto this remote neuromyotrino lens implant because it's, it literally works as a camera that's got the ability to have still, still photos, still snap screenshots onto it and or... Uh, short video streams So but it can but what's also happening concerning what's being reported is that they're recording everything you see Through these islands implants. So let's say if you're a homeless woman who's been made homeless And they're propping up people to approach her at a wooded area and when the people come on the property They'll pull out their dick and act like they're taking a piss right in front of the victim when the island's implant records that, they that then becomes a recorded image on their comp on their computer. Then they can program the computer to retransmit back that visual image either onto the remote neural monitoring island's implants and or the brain to computer interface implant, so that when a gang stalk oh my god and suck dick is said, when the ear implant processes that and then that gets sent to the brain to computer interface implant, then a pre-programmed function is, is programmed to execute to transmit the visual image that was recorded of a man pulling out his dick in front of you. So you are forced to see it again in your visual cortex as a result of it being placed back onto the remote neural monitoring eye lens implant. The retina sees it, it processes it through the optical nerve, and then the visual cortex sees it again. 
they then continue to do that repeatedly, that now becomes a visual entrain pathway. So welcome to the non-stop sadistic torture of a gang stalking victim that they could be doing this to. Anyone at any time can read between the lines concerning who they may be doing this to. So, if you are aware of what gang stalking would do concerning trying to intentionally excite a response out of you, which is another motive of why they're doing what they're doing, when they, when they prop up something around you that you've been sensitized to related to the sensitization method of gang stalking, when they prop up a statement around you that's related to a statement that was said as you were enduring a prior victimization, they program the computer to recognize that statement, and then when the computer recognizes it, it then sends a visual or auditorial manipulation to you. Forcing the brain to constantly hear or see it over and over and over again. Now, <coughs> there's also enough, there's all, there also can be other motives concerning why they're creating these uh, neurally looped and trained pathways. And the reason why they're looped neural pathways that they're creating, including neurally looped neural networks, <coughs> is not just to create the potentiated frequency output from it. In order to potentiate that frequency output, you got to repeat the same exact identical acts. Okay? So there's other motivations connected to that as well, and I don't feel up to going through it again because I don't feel well today. Hold on a second. All right, so I'm gonna get, I'm getting ready to let you go because the sun's out, and I'm gonna prop up my solar panels. So, if you have an apartment or a home, no one has the right to break down that door and come in it and pull their pants down in front of you, and ha and, and so you are forced to visually see their dick. But when they can make you homeless, all they do is fucking track you to a wooded area. Okay. Make it look like they got a normal appearing reason to come on the property to do it, and how are you going to prove it's done intentionally? And then how are you going to prove why it's done concerning the motive of it? Is that an additional reason why they made me homeless? Because these are remote neuromonitoring islands implants that are in the left eye, which is the top picture, and the right eye, which is the uh, bottom picture. Okay? That's a fucking Lulu. You just would not believe how sick these fucking psychos are. You fucking just would not believe it. They're fucking sick to the fucking maximum extreme. Okay, it can't be said any clearer. Okay? They can program this brand new computer interface implant that is also interfacing with the ear implant so that when the ear implant processes any other sound that you've been sensitized to, like the sound of a muffler, the sound of a muffler, the sound of a landscaping, landscaping tool, the sound of a lawnmower, the sound of a car, uh, car ho uh, horn honking, the sound of a bang, the sound of a click. Any, they can program that fucking computer to, to execute any one of these six sadistic commands as a direct result of anything that the ear implant is forced to process around you. Meaning that you can fucking be walking down the street and somebody can walk right by you and said, I had a good day, and they can program this fucking computer to execute one of these commands to execute the sadistic uh, technique as a direct result of that computer being programmed to execute the command whenever the ear implant uh, processes the sound of somebody saying, I had a good day. So do you see how their victimizations are able to be achieved by and through things that can be easily blended within any environment? And they can also send voice to skull to these ear implants, forcing the victim to hear something that the computer has been programmed to execute a function of once that computer translates the sound to text. So the victim has no way at all not to block out the voice to skull or any or any way that the brain to computer interface implant is interfacing with the brain. They can't block it out because their brain is forced to experience it. 
So they get to achieve their visual and auditory brain treatment, whether you fucking try and ignore it or not, because they're forcing the fucking brain to experience it, by and through these non-consensual biological intrusions. They're fucking forcing it. And over here are spinal column implants and the back of the head implant. I got a bump right now in the back of my head that's the size of a fucking pea, and it won't move out of place. It moves around just a little bit, but it won't move out of place. Oh, and by the way, uh, I forget what month it was. I think it was January 2020. I went to Scripps Mercy Hospital out here in La Jolla, San Diego, and told them to take a CAT scan of me because the back of my head was hurting. Well, when the CAT scan came back, if it was my CAT scan report, because it's also been reported that these fucking satanic rats are telling doctors and hospitals, medical centers, medical clinics, and even private practices to uh, fake the test results. Because they don't want you having any proof of anything that's been done to you, including directed energy weapon damage, ultrasonic sound bone conduction, traumatic brain injury, traumatic brain injury from the directed energy weapons, and or any implants in you. They can't have you walking away with fucking proof. But what's one of the things that the body and brain will do if you are implanted? Well, one thing can, that can appear on the, on the CAT scan's result is a calcification, which is also thoroughly discussed in the Technocrime Fighters video series, video number 58. It's openly discussed. Hold on one second. It's openly fucking discussed that when you go get an fMRI and or a CAT scan, if that machine is not calibrated to where it can distinguish, to where it can take a thorough look at something that's extremely small, then what it might show up as is a calcification and or a shadow spot. So when I went to fucking Scripps Mercy Hospital in January of 2020, which is right up the fucking road from where I'm at right now, uh, and he showed me the CAT scan results, he stated they were mine, he showed me two um, calcification spots right at the very base of the bottom of the head. And that is one of the massively exposed identified spot where implants are being placed at. And your body forming calcifications around implants is a massively identified thing that the body is naturally doing if you have the implants in you. Okay? So... If you go to a hospital to ask for a CAT scan and then you have those type of CAT scan results and the doctor you're interfacing with has been already privately colluded with and the host who's colluding with him uh, can tell him what to say, a dish, uh, some of the things that he may say are the things that he's told to say because the host of this crime that's colluding with him privately knows you fucking wear a tape recorder. So he might be told to say that that's a common thing that, that appears on CAT scans of people that are in your age group. In order to make it appear those things ain't done there, specific, that those things aren't there uh, specifically, uniquely because of another cause. Because the host would tell him to say something like that because the host knows as he's examining you and as he's telling you about what these are, that host knows you got a fucking tape recorder running in the recording mode. Plus, that that doctor was probably colluded with to claim it's just a calcification. Okay, he's now got a normal apparent excuse for unintentional misdiagnosis. Because that's the only thing that appears to be appearing on the CAT scan. But from many testimonies I've seen on the internet, it is, it's extremely possible to identify these implants for what they are if the fMRI and or CAT scan and or X-ray can be calibrated down to a, a smaller calibration that would enable these machines to see them. And plus, if you're being hit with directed energy weapons and they're sending some of that directed energy weapons to the implants, where well, your blood is going to show radiation in it. Do you honestly think that the deep state's going to fucking allow you to get a blood test and accurate, truthful blood test results? That's a fucking loopy not. Not the great majority of the time, they won't. So you need to extensively research Roger Tulsa's electronic harassment YouTube videos 
It shows him openly stating doctors and hospitals are being threatened to lose their license if they assist gang stalking victims concerning implantation. This is done so you walk away with no motherfucking medical proof about the implants themselves and concerning that the implant because if you can get if you can get record showing that these implants are there and you back them up with extremely descriptive statements concerning how they're being used including the fact that they're being used for non-stop sadistic torture day in and day out, week after week, month after month, and year after year, until this torture intentionally induces your death, if you got a report showing that they're there, those implants, combined with your statement and any other proof you might have about any aspect of the targeting, because some tape recorders can pick up voice skull. Say if, uh, say if you're a gang stalking victim, whether you got an ear implant in you or not, and people have been propped up along your routes every single fucking day that you've been any and all places you've been to. And they have repeated gang stalk, oh my god, and suck dick continually the great majority of the time of each one of these days. Then if you went to a hospital and told the doctor to hook you up to an EKG machine. And then you played a tape recorder that showed somebody saying gang stalk, oh my god, and suck dick. Guess what that fucking EEG machine is going to show? It's going to show an extreme spike on the readout. Because the brain is emitting a strong electrical frequency output excitation. So that's undeniable proof right there that they have you nearly entrained. Do you think they'll allow you to do that? Of course not. Of course not. The goal, uh, some of the goals of these fucking filthy whores is to slowly kill you. Because you can even see in this diagram here that when some of these implants are activated, including by and through the trigger words, that radiation can be released in the body. Okay? Implants are activated, uh, distress, depression, pain, anger, and right below that talks about radiation. Okay, but I didn't get that um, firmly ex uh, exposed in the snap screenshot, and I'm sorry about that. So, just the fact that they're sending massive high doses of EMF fields and uh, electromagnetic non-ionizing and ionizing radiation through direct energy weapons and electromagnetic weapons connected uh, to gang stalking victims, right fucking there should tell you that they're intentionally attempting to induce uh, many forms of cancers. Imagine coming down with face cancer. Especially if you're a woman. They'll target your throat if you're a smoker so they can claim you came down with throat cancer as a direct result of your smoking. So they can make money off of treating it. Or they'll just fucking induce cancer and do not allow it to be treated so you end up dead in order to stop the, the whistle blowing. And in order to cash in on a third-party life insurance policy taken out by a syndicate member, member connected to this nationwide organized crime syndicate, and that person can even be living in another state when it occurs. Because the doctors are sending the death certificate into the conscious awareness that the victim has been killed. And so then they take that information and then claim the insurance policy on the victim. These are satanic horrors. And they can fake um, consent concerning organs, uh, concerning donating body organs upon your death. So they can harvest your organs and sell those. So my fellow American citizens, this is just one aspect of what a specific gang stalking victim is going through. Who do you think that victim might be? Imagine seeing visual imagery in your visual cortex. Of a human being sucking a horse's dick. And while that person is forced to see that. They're being mocked about it. Through voice to skull. Like how could he do that? How could she do that? Because they can even incorporate a gang stalking victim's physical imagery. Within the, uh, within the sophisticated visual software that they got. So in order to make it appear that that's your own physical imagery. Sucking the dick of a horse. You know, like when you dream, the great majority of a human being's dream shows that 
person who's dreaming, their dreams show their own visual imagery in their dreams. Well, they got technology. I've seen it exposed in many videos uh, that are exposed in this crime. Okay? Where they got visual imagery where they can take your visual representation, what you look like. If you look in the mirror and see what you look like, they can take that visual imagery, incorporate it within software, and then incorporate other people's visual imagery within the software, and then have it engage in specific acts, like you being raped, you begging to suck somebody's dick. Welcome to your sick bitch demonic government. And then while the victim's enduring it, like if they're enduring it, because you can endure that while you're awake too, they can transmit through voice of skull. Why does a bitch want to suck on somebody's dick? This is fucking literally how sick these fuckers are. Literally. Why do you think I'm being so descriptive? Consider this. If this was fucking happening to you, and you were at the amount of educated knowledge that I'm at concerning this, that means that part of that educated knowledge is... You know that you cannot and never will be able to get no help from doctors, police, lawyers, or courts, including judges. That means you know that you will be entrapped in this crime for the rest of your fucking life. Forced to endure it every day, day in and day out, non-stop, including when you're sleeping. How the fuck do you think you would feel if this was happening to you while you're consciously aware that you're completely powerless over it endlessly? Would you find creative ways to expose what you're under? These fucking sick satanic fucking bitches will literally use your own parents to gaslight you to say things to you that are related to this crime. That's related to the sensitization method. Imagine your own mother or father saying something to you that's directly connected to this crime where there is no way whatsoever at all that that parent could know that. There's no way that parent could know that at all unless that parent was told to say it by an organized crime connected member connected to this crime. Imagine that parent threatening you, threatening to call the police on you if you don't call under the guise of well, you're not calling us, so we don't know what's happening to you. So we're going to call the police so they can look for you. The same fucking police department that played a role in a staged event that led to your sexual human trafficking. So then the police have a normal apparent reason to come and find you so they can make continued updated falsified police report about your living situation and then eventually use that in court after a staged event and claim Miss Williams can't take care of herself, we better take a legal probate control of you, they put you in a group home, and then you're endless, endlessly sadistically raped a after you have been forced to eat or drink something that's got the date rape jug on you. Imagine your parents being connected to that type of event that produced the results that assisted in obtaining that illegal probate control where then all these other, other sadistic crimes happening to you. Happen to you. Imagine that. Imagine that happening to you, where your own fucking parent was threatening to call, contact the fucking police department that played a role in a staged event that happened to you on an earlier date, and as a result of that staged event, you ended up massively sexually human trafficking. While the parent creatively lets you know on prior occasions that they have been influenced to participate in this gang stalker crime by saying something to you that you've been sensitized to and or something that there's no way that they could know Unless they had been approached and told to say it by an actual syndicated member. And that includes a sister or brother doing the same thing. Imagine that fucking happening to you. Imagine a, a police that was responsible for that type of event that led to that type of exploitation who then can continually have control over your circumstance to lead you to illegal probate control through staged probable cause at staged events that produce the documentation that then assist in illegal probate control that is directly connected to massive sexual exploitation of you in the past. Imagine a rapist having control over your life. Because what the fuck does rapists do? They love taking you from one place to another to fucking rape you. So look at the mind rape connected to that. While you're going through all these other sadistic traumas endlessly... 
Directed energy weapons also produce traumatic, a long-lasting, physical, resulting traumatic brain injury. Ultrasonic sound bone conduction can induce non-stop consecutive concussions. So they're literally killing the brain while they're entraining it. Okay? So my fellow American citizens, I wanted to make this video day, today to showcase to you what's being exposed concerning what gang stalking crimes are being reported to be doing. Always remember, all you got, and, and, and check this out, the synthetic, synthetic electronic dreams that, that gang stalking victims are forced to see in their visual cortex, able to be achieved through remote neural monitoring, has even been exposed on national radio shows. And it's all over the internet. It's even exposed in books written about this fucking crime. Now, yesterday, I ordered the book through Amazon, Brain Implants and Messages, written by Dr. Hilde Garstaninger, who's also worked with Melinda Kidder, with fellow, uh, with many fellow gang stalking victims who have discovered implants in multiple victims. I can't see her because she's requesting that I have a doctor's referral to get tested and have five letters from people that I've known for five or more years so they can validate, I guess, she didn't really expand on why the letters were needed, but that's what I have received from her would be needed in order for her to test me. Well, how the fuck can you have a relationship with five different people for five straight full fucking years if this crime intentionally destroys your relationships in order to socially isolate you? And she even knows that because I've seen her talk about uh, the fact that gang stalking victims are isolated in some online interviews. So the people that are out there that are offering services that will help you prove you've been implanted are requesting things from you that you cannot provide to them. And as a result of you not being able to provide it to them, you fucking can't get tested. As a direct result, you're left and trapped in that aspect of the crime. At least for now, until you can find somebody else. And that's a, there's an extreme, extreme unlikelihood that you're going to be. Because what did I say earlier? They fucking watch what you're looking up on the internet. They then, through the in real time, in real time, everyday tracking of you, they can see if you're heading to the places you've looked up. And then they privately collude with these satanic bastards in hospitals and medical clinics and medical centers. And check this out. Many of the medical centers and medical clinics that are within our community are owned by the very organized crime groups that are fucking participating, that are hosting this shit. And the Department of Homeland Security has been implicated in that. So Google their sick bitch demonic and implicated ass to this crime. <coughs> oh, and there's so much more going on concerning this crime connected to everyone are monitoring. Like memory mapping and memory stimulation. Okay. Memory blanking. And make no mistake about it, remote neural monitoring, the supercomputer that it's in that's interfacing with the victim's neurological and biological system, also has the integrated technology of at least voice to skull, including voice to skull with voice morphing. My name is Leslie Williams. I live in San Diego, California. I'm a target victim and activist concerning the continued crime expeditions of what is known as gang stalking. I do not do any type of illegal drugs whatsoever. Ever. I do not drink alcohol in any way, shape, or form. The last time I had drank alcohol was in 2012. On that date, I only had three wine coolers that were either six or eight ounces. And I drank those as I was by myself. I have not been intoxicated. I have not had one alcoholic beverage since 2012. And before that, it was two years before that, um, before I had one. And then years before, and then at least a year or two before that, before I had that one. Okay, I had no mental illness whatsoever. And by the way, do you honestly think that the falsified diagnosis of schizophrenia, why do you think they, they would pick that type of false diagnosis? Well, what do, true, what do people who actually have schizophrenia, what do they endure? What do they endure as a result of those symptoms from that mental diagnosis? Hearing voices and seeing things. And what are the ear implants being used for uh, concerning what's being reported that they're additionally being used for? Voice to skull, hearing things. What is the either the either and or the BCI and or islands implants being used for? Forcing the victim to see things in their visual cortex. 
What's well, another capability of remote neuro monitoring? Memory blanking, thought interruption. Now, if you can do that against the victim as the victim's being questioned in court through a police officer and or a doctor, then you can make the victim forget information. You can make the you can interrupt their sequential thought process, and as a direct result, they can claim you got dementia and lock you up in an illegal probate control group home under the guise of you can't take care of yourself because you got Alzheimer's or dementia. They're fucking treating human beings like straw people, and they're intentionally inducing these art artificial effects on the victim in order to make it appear that the victim's got it and to even trick the victim into believing they got it if they don't have this type of educated level of educated knowledge. This is your sick bitch lying demonic government. These fucking psychotic, demonic, satanic, murdering, raping whores will do this to each and every gang stalking victim nonstop every single day, week, month, for years at a time where the only thing that is left of that victim's brain is nothing but a nonstop, massive, traumatic brain injury brain that is still induced, that is still experiencing traumatic brain injury in real time and non-stop consecutive concussions in real time while the brain is kept in a non-stop disassociated state because the brain is experiencing non-stop massive trauma every second. So in closing, I want you to take another look at this. Let me go back into the snap screenshots in this gallery. When you go to Google and type in uh, U.S. diplomats hit with sound and microwave weapons at the Cuban embassy, it's widely reported and has been reported on national radio show that they were hit with the same exact identical weaponry that gang stalker victims are being hit with. In some of their interviews, it shows them stating that they've been diagnosed with traumatic brain injury and consecutive concussions. The fact that this technology can induce that has also been exposed by doctors and scientists online. And their exposures concern this technology and gang stalking crimes. Look at this fucking shit. Okay. In fact, check this out. I can use this this phone I'm pointing to right now. It fell out of service contract yesterday. So check this out. Well, actually today. So, but this is an app that can be used without the phone being in an active service contract. So let's look at that right there. That's one. I bet I at least got 300 snap screenshots on this new phone of the readouts that the ultrasound detector is picking up. Ultrasonic sound bone conduction. And that's a delivery system as well for Voice to Skull. Look at this fucking shit. 58 dB SPLs at 21.6 kilohertz. And it's, it's, it appears to be widely staying in the range of 21.6, 21.7, and 21.8 while it's massively fluctuating in the dB SPLs, decibels. Look at that fucking shit. Okay? I at least got 300 snap screenshots on this new phone alone. So let's bring up the ultrasound detector app right fucking now. Because you can use this app without the phone being in its service contract. So baby cake sweethearts and munching butts, check it out. I'm going to show you that it's picking it up right now in real time while I'm at a fucking wooded area. Here's the app right here. Ultrasound detector. I'm going to fucking bring it up. Watch. It's going to literally show you it's being picked up in real time as I'm fucking talking to you. Now watch it.
Say if a victim who's experiencing ultrasonic sound bone conduction so it can be used as a delivery system for voice to skull, do you think that when that voice to skull transmission occurred it would show a specific a specific um a specific decibel level being hit? Now that one right there went up to almost fifty DBSPLs. Okay. I'm at a fucking wooded area. I'm at the octopus tree location right fucking now. I'm even going to show you the octopus tree. Hold on. There it is, right over there. Uh, and that's... The app was still running as I was showing you the tree. Look at that. It went way up past 50. Okay, now do you really think that's happening in real time in a fucking wooded area if nothing's going on? Uh, I can't save this in real time uh, event because you can send it to your email account, but I can't do it now because this phone fell out of service contract actually this morning. Imagine you experiencing memory uh, stimulation of good memories of, an, of, a, of uh, good memories that you had with one of your parents, and then right after that's done, they'll stimulate abusive memories. And a lot more can be going on simultaneously as that's occurring. I'll eventually make a video about that. So, my fellow American citizens, please re research what I stated in this fucking video. <coughs> I gotta let you go, because I got stuff to do. Everybody, thank you for listening. Have a good day. Please say a prayer for my safety and for the safety of all gang stalking victims. I hope you learned something in this video. Okay. I, I literally gotta let you go, because I got stuff to do. It's already 11.43, and I, even got, I barely have gotten anything done today. I woke up feeling like shit. Was I hit with direct energy weapons last night? Absolutely. To the top of the head and so on. Okay? So, I want to thank you for staying with me. I want to thank you for being with me. I hope and pray that you've researched what I've exposed. Okay? Uh, follow my instructions to, to, to the letter. Research all my descriptions. Correlate the data that comes up from each research description. Each description is a piece of the puzzle, and after a while, you'll start having more of a holistic, pictorial understanding of what's going on concerning the entire crime of gang stalking. Gang stalking victims are extreme torture victims. They're torturing us literally to our death, intentionally, purposely. Thank you for listening. Today's date is December 17th. 2020. My name is Leslie Williams. I've been in San Diego, California, and I also want you to know that. I arrived in San Diego on August 8, 2011 from Connecticut. I have literally not hung around one person, not for one second since I've been in San Diego since that date. And it's now December 17, 2020. Now I made that choice before coming to San Diego from Connecticut, from Connecticut because I ended up being exploited in Michigan through this crime as a direct result of my life being socially infiltrated. Now, I already knew they were going to gang stalk me from Michigan to Connecticut and then from Connecticut to San Diego because I was gang stalked from Michigan to San Diego in 2006. I came out here to San Diego from Michigan in 2006 and I was out here between 1 and 38 days and was gang stalked along every single one of my routes and where I lived at. That's if I got the email files to prove it. Okay. So, social infiltration is done for many reasons, it's done to create fake friendships. So that these people can lead you to environments where you can be set up, where you can be exploited, where you can be killed, where you can be robbed. Okay, and for dependency relationships as well. So, trust me when I say, my fellow American citizens, if you had any idea about what happened to me in Michigan, you would know that I'm telling you the truth concerning that. So, if I ever end up dead and the police try and report that I was killed because of something I was doing with somebody else or something... Uh, that somebody did to me as a result of me hanging around that person that ain't nothing but a fucking in your face completely 1000% bull face lie always remember that on any and all dates because I will not form any type of relationship with anybody even at the acquaintance level 
until I know for a fact that I am out of every single aspect of this crime permanently. And I already know that will never happen. Okay, so everybody, thank you for listening. Have a good day. Please say a prayer for my safety. Please stay tuned to this Parasope account. Please research all descriptions. Follow all instructions, and you will eventually see truth. Uh, everybody have a great night, and please stay tuned to, this, tuned to this account for future broadcasts, and feel free to go into the profile of this account so you can watch any or all broadcasts that are already dedicated to it, including the three-hour video that I just recently made here in the last 10 days. That video also shows the live Periscope broadcast of the day the remote neural monitoring islands and plants were discovered. When you bring that video up and see the video being played in that video, take snap screenshots of the eyes. I got it, and then zoom in on them and you'll see them. Well, you're going to see them in the video anyways. All right, have a good day, everybody. I got to go. Bye-bye.